All right, shall we begin? Let's yeah, do it. Let's do it. <clears throat> Yo, <laughs> bro gang, we are joined by the Righteous Raja, the Dining Don Dada, the Mastication Maestro, the Deep Voice Viking. You got B.O., he got V.O. <laughs> Not playing tennis, but he got the bass lines. <laughs> <laughs> Call him Uncle Junior because he eat out. Never make a res at seven because he ate. Call him Ellis Allen how he's documenting these immigrants. Oh, you're not fucking with righteous eats? How about you righteous eat these nuts? Oh, you're not fucking with J-Key Cho? How about you high-key chow down on these nuts? You chuggy, he chewy. Doesn't have a six-pack, but he's finding more hidden gems than De Beers. Keeps it thorough in every burrow. Every meal fired like an inferno. Supporting spots of all stripes like Joe Burrow. Helping restaurateurs get more work, no furlough. Co-founder of Righteous Eats, content creator, J-Key Cho. J-Key, how the hell are you? Yo, I had no idea <laughs> you were going to turn it up like this, James. Yo, <laughs> Jakey, how's, how's fuck my, these munchies up. How was my yo? It was it was very solid. <laughs> I'll, I'll give it like a solid eight out of ten. <laughs> wow. right, you know, yo. yo, yo, but <laughs> nah, yo. I, had, I had no. Is this how y'all do all your intros? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Sorry. I didn't do my cool on, man. No. <laughs> I did not. Ex- I did not expect this. Like. Because, yo, y- y- y'all were mad, too. And then as soon as y'all kicked it off, I didn't even know that y'all had, like, a whole manifesto just <laughs> ready to <laughs> Yeah, you were, ta- you were talking to James earlier. When we were talking about our upbringings and everything, you were talking to James and Lawrence. But yeah. just, let me introduce you to Jimmy and Larry. Uh, to be clear, as a white man, I do not have a manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> just, I want to get that on the record. Thank you, Jakey. Word. How, How are, are you? you? Yeah, Good, thanks man. for coming through, dog. Yeah. Thank what you, so what much do you for eat today? Me. Um, <laughs> I actually didn't eat anything today. Oh, oh shit! Yeah, yeah, I had a late night meal. Um, I had a, a jerk chicken from Peppers. Ooh, Ooh righteous! Like Two right a.m. Here? It's like right here. Nah, nah, nah. The OG location on okay. Flatbush Avenue. Okay, you know, respectfully, not cash the only. one. You're in the Lower Side. I mean, you know, like those type of um immigrant operations. I don't think they fully figured out like how to plan out like IP and rollout. So, for instance, did y'all know like Kennedy Fried Chicken is mm-hmm. not a real franchise? Well, er- everyone is like individual, <laughs> yeah. right? Is everyone is like a family member or member yeah. of the clan that got knighted and they just went <laughs> off and did it? And wow. I think that's a similar situation with Peppers, but okay. don't quote me on this. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, late night jerking your chicken, how was it? Oh, shit was delicious, man. You know what I mean? My wife, she's um in Italy right now with the in laws. And, you know, when she's home, She's not letting me go in at when, 2 a.m. When the cat's away, the, chicken, mat, you know the mice I mean? will jerk. <laughs> Pause. But yes, very much so. Yeah, he needs his wife out of the country to jerk his chicken in late more at ways, night. In more ways than one. 100%, man. Yeah. <laughs> Jakey, right. thank you so much for joining us, dude. Um, As a former alumni of alumni, one uh, of the first <laughs> lifestyle boutiques in New York, I believe, right? Uh, I, I mean, it was one of many. Right. You know what I mean? One but a, but, a, but a first mover amongst some first movers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we had a pretty good selection. Yeah. You are a stylish individual. People obviously know you for your palate, but we want to talk about your fit today with a little fit check. So why don't you just tell us everything real quick, what, what, what you're rocking. <laughs> Yo, I'm like so self-conscious in front no. of you what? talking Stop about it. my fit. Stop it. You know what I mean? You should have worn that soccer jersey. I should have had a fucking squad, squad, bro. Jersey, <laughs> and we would have just looked like tools, man. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> yeah, all three of you. us. Thursday night league. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, uh, right now I got hat from Kango. This is like the only silhouette that I rock because I got a huge dome. You know, How many I mean? of those do you have? Fuck, I got like 25, 26 of these in different colors. You man. ever do it backwards? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. Always, always direction yeah, is right. going front. Forward you know I mean? move. Forward, man. never backwards. L- you know what L- I mean? LL Cool J Key. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I got the shades from uh, Bonnie and Clyde. Spicy. I you like those. I mean? Um, this is from a brand called Guest in Residence. Okay. Uh, Gigi Hadid is the face of it. Oh, yeah. Nice, uh, little, nice little cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. It was fucking soft. Soft yeah. like you know baby mean? foreskin. You know Shout out mean? to my- Kid Merrill. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my wife, she's the uh, design director. Oh, wow. Oh, so um, she, uh, she's she been with them since the very beginning when okay. it was uh, just being conceptualized. So Free we 99. Out we out. Nah, I actually copped this, oh. I believe. Wait, hold up. Maybe I didn't. I forgot. <laughs> it could have been a sample. So let's keep it quiet on that one. <laughs> what about Kangol? Is Kangol sending you free Kangol caps? did. Kangol Fuck did yeah. send me a whole lot of uh, whole lot of caps. And uh, the, the, the shirt, I believe, is from Koss. Yeah, nice. they got they got good products over there. The denim is from uh, Nanamika. Oh yeah, you know good I mean? shit. And, Nippon uh, denim. Yeah, Nippon denim. <laughs> and uh, the 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 kicks are wallabies. Classic. High or low? Yeah. High, well, these are high. Interesting. You know what I mean? So 
Whenever the fall season kicks in, I feel like I need to kind of bring out the high wallies. Yeah, yeah I get that. Cover your ankles like a geisha. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the socks are the socks. Yeah, I forget where, where I got nice these weather. Socks. Nice weather. Oh, it's a it's a it's a select shop out in Seoul. Okay. okay. Yeah, Hell so yeah. I got it from them. Shit, I should have I should have worn my ons, yo. Oh yeah. <laughs> totally. Shout out on. I yeah. should have I should have done the athlete research. over here, yo. Yeah. I should have done the research, man. I fucked up. All good. Roger, Zendaya, J. Key. Yeah. What about the big three? What about the medals? What about the, the hardware? Uh the hardware. I just got it from Tommy, man. I just had like some, you know, like some 18K situation. You know what I mean? Shout 18. out to Tommy. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Is that your jeweler? Yeah, Tommy you know, the Tommy the Jewel. Yeah. Well, okay, there Tommy you go. The Jewel. I didn't know. Yeah, Bowery. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm Bowery, you know what I mean? What about yeah. this little, is this new? This, this is, uh, yeah, it's a ring, you know what I mean? I'm a married man. Congrats. Congratulations, bro. Thank you, thank you. Welcome I didn't to want, the club. Are you married? Bing Yo, bong. Congrats, bro. Don't, look so, don't look so surprised. Yeah, it's been like five years. <laughs> it's not exciting anymore. No, I'm nah, kidding. Man, I love that's, my wife. That's great, man. <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah, I've been with the same lady for a long time. How long you been with your lady? <laughs> Shit, yeah, you're like it's a similar thing, probably going on like 12, 13 years. Yeah, similar, like same, yeah. same. So we basically made an early investment you know <laughs> in each I mean? other, in each other. Yeah, in it's love. Like the ROI is <laughs> solid. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to do one of those quick hit and run type situations. Yeah, I'm with you too. Love is transactional for sure. Dude. 100 thousand percent, bro. This is a partnership. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mergers. What about the uh, the panties? We gotta ask. <laughs> The panties? Yeah. yeah. What the fuck am I rocking, bro? <laughs> oh, these are from Icebreakers. <laughs> what? Yeah, y'all know about that? No. Sounds like a, yeah. sounds like a dick pill. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's pretty big in like the outdoor, okay. um, you know. The corp community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Like it, it keeps your nut sacks dry and shit, <laughs> regardless of the weather condition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Icebreakers. What? Yeah. What flavor? We're talking boxer breeze? Box, uh so usually boxers. I do uh, I do boxers, but today yes. uh, I didn't pick up my laundry. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> these shits are a little tight on me right now. You know it's a mean? pre-righteous eats era. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> do you have clothes from pre-righteous eats that like don't fit you anymore? Because now uh, you're I a real eater. I definitely do, dog. A real you know eater. I, mean? I was like, a, you know, I used to rock like, you know, large tees and medium tees comfortably. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, you know what I mean? The, XL boys? The torso was getting a bit, bit you know, larger. Just, just sure. by nature of the job. Yeah. So um, it's an yeah. occupational hazard. It is. It is. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sacrificing my torso for the righteousness of the restaurant community. <laughs> Thank you for your service. You know what, I mean? yeah. what about the beads? Oh, this is uh, it's a Buddhist bead. There's 108 of these little joints because I'm Buddhist. And, um, you know, in Buddhism, we believe that there's 108 strifes in life. And uh, yeah, it's just like a long bead. Nice. You know what, I mean? what strife are you on? Do you, it was a strife. Is that what, like a yeah, like, like strife, suffering, different pain right. points. Where are you at? You at triple digits yet? Oh, not yet. Okay, I'm on my way. Though. <laughs> way. Okay, I'm on my way. way. Right. I, if anything, I'm genuinely just surprised right now. I don't know like which direction that we should be going because y'all energy just turned up 150. Yeah, well we're pros, dude. You yeah. know, well, like, uh, I love it. I love it, man. There's a lot that I need to learn from y'all today. No, I don't know about well, that, dude. dude. Well, as you sip on this coffee to maybe match our energy, what are you sipping on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, I feel like I'm under interrogation right now. <laughs> That's uh, called an interview. So dude. there's this only an is, hour and a half uh, more of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a coffee that I picked up from a, a new shop um, right next to Dimes called No Gem. Okay. Um, they sell like, you know, kitschy Korean gifts and candles and, cool. you know, hand washes and shit, which is what I got. Oh, that's oh, right. You came bearing gifts. Thank you again, yeah, yeah, JK. Yeah, yeah. So Appreciate you, man. This, uh, they use like corn tea with Americano. It's oh, a fire. Okay. It's pretty good. Okay. Right. Yeah. How expensive is that coffee though? I think it was like $5. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Standard price point. Okay. Yeah. Like Standard that. iced Americano price point. We've reached the seven dollar Rubicon here in the Lower East Side. Is that um, right? With yes, iced sir. coffees, yeah. It's well when you tip, it cracks. Right, seven. right, right, right. Yeah. Do y'all always tip? You got to. Dude. You have to. Yeah. How much y'all tip? A, a dollar. dollar on an iced coffee because you're just like you know. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. If same. you're making something like yeah. making a latte or whatever, but I don't, I don't order that. I shit. feel like a Washington yeah. is fair. Yeah. Same. Yeah. yeah but always, you got to do at least that's the bare minimum. Yeah. I always tip a dollar. When you get, do you get hooked up at restaurants? I get a lot of offers to get hooked up at restaurants. But you always refuse? But I always refuse, yes. Okay. I haven't taken a single free meal from a restaurant. Okay, unlike the rest of TikTok. If you get, <laughs> if you get free food at a restaurant, 
what's the protocol for tipping? Do you like have to do the math? Like what would the, t- what would the bill total so, have been if yeah, I'd been charged in full and then 100%. what's 20, 25, 30% on top of that? Yeah. So okay. that's usually how I do the math. But that's so, extra Kumon for you. It is. It's extra, yeah, extra, you know, <laughs> knowledge points. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, no, nah, that's, that's a good, that's, thank you for that question. So a lot of restaurateurs, you know, they're, they're very genuine, generous people, especially people that work in the hospitality industry. Yeah, right? they're literally, they, the they, they're creating experiences that they want you to call enjoy. hospitality yeah. for a exactly. reason. Exactly. The know? nature of their job is to serve. So right. they're some of the nicest people that you're going to oh, come Oh, they serve. <laughs> and, you know, if you put in the religious component, the cultural component, some of these restaurateurs, they take it as an offense if you come in as a guest and you try to pay. Right. Oh shit. So they're like, yo, like you're disrespecting my household, you're disrespecting my God, so on and or so gods. forth. Yeah. Gods, yes, right. multiple deities. So I've had instances where, you know, like I actually paid a shrine. Really? Oh yeah. word? Yeah, yeah. At this Burmese they, restaurant. They take Apple Pay? <laughs> yeah. I actually, Do you tap and go? I actually, I actually went to the <laughs> bank, pulled out like a hundos. And then I paid a Shran. And then he was like, oh, I'm cool with that, but Fire. I'm not going to take your money. That's kind of beautiful. Yeah, it is I mean, beautiful to it do it that way. Yeah. I, well, wish, I wish that was the way it always worked. Yeah. Well, I guess not. We got to pay the restaurant, but yeah. Yeah. the Shrine just feels kind of like baller. Dude. Maybe throwing fit should start a Shrine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of a, a perfect segue into the meat and potatoes. No pun intended. I say that for every guest. Um, <laughs> of the only podcast that matters. As the co-founder of Righteous Eats, can uh-huh. you just talk about like the the goal of what you do at Righteous Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we started during the pandemic, you know what I mean? You know, as James, you you know a bit of my past. I've I've done different work in- Born in France. (laughs) Allegedly, (laughs) allegedly born in France. You know what I mean? Um, I read an interview with somebody named J. Keith Cho that was born in France. (laughs) Definitely wasn't this J. Keith Cho, but um, yeah. So, you know, I started, uh, I was making a lot of cooking videos on TikTok okay. for fun. You know what I mean? Right. Actually, we all were. The person who encouraged me to do this was Donnie Kwok. Oh, yeah, oh shout yeah, out my, Donnie. Yeah, my big bro, Donnie Kwok, who I believe was a former guest, a past mm, guest. Yes. On, on a previous yes. podcast yeah, endeavor yeah, that yeah, shall yeah. not be named for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. And just like a former colleague and yeah, homie course, and yeah. mentor. Yeah. So he, uh, I big was Donnie. making these, um, like short snippets on Instagram story just for fun, like mm-hmm. cooking up Korean food and he told me like yo that shit is mad annoying to watch you should just compile it and put it up on tiktok okay that's constructive criticism at its finest 100 percent. so i started putting these up on tiktok and they started picking up steam but then you know i realized like yo bro like first of all i'm not a i'm not a trained cook you know this isn't a trajectory that i saw myself like making a career out of right but I also was able to amass a, a decent size following. What are we talking when you say decent size? Like, like give a me couple some hundred numbers. thousand okay. on TikTok. You know what I mean? So like Nothing to shake like, a stick at. Yo, I was like, yo, um, at around this time, the reports that were coming out were saying that, yo, like one out of three restaurants in New York was going to close permanently. Right. This was like restaurant apocalypse. A lot of mom and pop restaurants, as you guys probably know, like they pay their staff under the table, mm-hmm. you know, uh, for for whatever reason, allegedly. <laughs> so they weren't able to get access to PPP loans. And a lot of these mom and pop eateries, especially the ones in the boroughs, they don't have access to like corporate comms teams. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they couldn't construct their narrative. They couldn't get loans. They were getting fucked left and right. right. So I was like, yo, like, what can I do to try to support some of these restaurants? And that's how I initially started Righteous Eats. And after we did that for about 18 to 24 months, we realized that, yo, it's one thing to highlight their stories, but it's another thing to figure out how do we direct revenue for these eateries, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, it's one thing to just be like, yo, this pizza's mad good or this fried rice is amazing, but it's like, yo, how can we actually get foot traffic into their doors? So that was phase two. And foot traffic sometimes might not be something that you could control. So. Right. We started getting these brand opportunities. So instead of me just saying like, yo, I drink Coca-Cola <laughs> and then get the bag, I said, yo, why don't I say I drink Coca-Cola, but y'all cut me an extra bag so I could buy out a restaurant for the day Whew. and have members of our community come and eat for free. This way, y'all get your deliverable. I get paid. The restaurant gets paid and the community gets to eat Damn, for free. Everybody wins. Everybody so, eats. Yeah. Everybody eats. So that's Righteously. phase two. 
And then now we're going to pivot into, the name to everybody eats, but everybody way. eats. Is it too late for that? <laughs> Maybe we should keep that shit off the record. I might okay, have okay. to do some uh, <laughs> research. <laughs> Go on, go daddy real quick. And see yeah. if that domain is available. And then phase three. It's probably a porn site. Yeah. That actually. <laughs> yo, <laughs> very much likely. Yeah. So. Um, okay. So sorry. Phase three. So yeah. phase sorry three. To, interview your, to interrupt your beautiful trajectory. Nah, nah, yeah, nah. It's, it's all jokes. good. Man. Um, so phase three going into it. I, I realized that some of these restaurants, they have the product, the story, and the passion to scale. Yeah. To want to get, to want to do bigger and better things. Right. So. They might want to create like CPG products. Mm. They might want to franchise their yeah. um, IP, but they just don't have the access to the information and the right mentors to guide them. A consigliere, if you will. Yeah. So like, why yeah. isn't there a Y Combinator for restaurants? Sure. You know what I mean? Why can't that Tamales lady who crossed the border back and forth four times to get to America and finally build a brick and mortar, why can't she have a CPG brand that could eventually sell to Whole Foods and cash out. Like, right. why can't we help them create that narrative? So that's kind of where we at right now. Like, so we just started doing, uh, uh, we just did our first seminar where we uh, help restaurateurs to understand how to tell their story via Facebook and Instagram. Oh, wow. Um, and we want to do more of that going okay. into 2025. Sick. Is that why Ratchet Seats has been quiet for a bit? Because you're focused on phase three where it's not about you guys. It's about like, helping everyone around you in the community and the rest of tours? 100% because, you know, I mean, you guys are in this content grind, right? Yeah. The barrier of Shit entry- will never of, stop. <laughs> it don't. Please the, release me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the barrier of entry to do something similar to what we do yeah. is not as high as people It's think. like non-existent. You need a phone. You know, all you need is a phone and then you could just go to a restaurant and the hook- the gimmick might be different for everybody, sure. right? Some people might be like, yo, I watch Righteous Z's because I like this dude's voice, whether it's fake or real. By the way, this is all AI yo, filter right Wait, now. do people, people think your shit is fake, your voice? All the time, man. <laughs> I mean, y'all just turned on the filter for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many times have you hit puberty? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's at least a, a three-timer yeah. club you know right here, dude. Yeah. So, your yeah, the gimmick, your knees. The, the gimmick is different, right? Like, right, it right. could be like, you know, Shorty got like, you know, blessed with big things and yeah, then, yeah, you know, yeah. people might want to watch that because <laughs> she's you know drinking coffee she's with, and she got a wagon on her yeah, yeah she just got the two trains popping you know what i'm <laughs> yeah. saying like that could be a gimmick or it could be like yo you're providing utility by highlighting mm -hmm. the cheapest eateries in new york right so you know it, it's it's almost like you're comp you know you you started off this whole project to help restaurateurs and then you find yourself like yo am i like trying to compete against other content creators to try to, you know, win the algorithm. Right. Is that really what I started this for? You had a reckoning? Like I wouldn't say it was a reckoning. It was more so just a realization, right? right. Like just like I took a step back and realized, like, yo, you can't really win in that model. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody wins because everybody's just trying to get for eyeballs and right. try to go highlight the new restaurant where the next restaurant. Uh -huh. where, We're gonna get into that for sure. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, man, let me. Let's uh, let's focus on what we could control. So, you know, that's why we did a collab with Smorgasburg right. highlighting for eateries that never had a brick and mortar situation mm -hmm. and give, giving them a platform, you know. Has there been any backlash or impatience from the Righteous Eats and the JK fans that are like, yo, I'm, where's all the content at? Yeah. You nah. a slop. I mean, you know, like we we do have a lot of folks, you know, asking us like, yo, like, are you going to go hit up X restaurant in X area? But yo, it's like one human being mm -hmm. right. that there's only so much I could eat, so much I could make, so much I could produce. Yeah. You know but when mean? people ask you, uh, like ask you who you are and what you do it for, right? Like you have this answer, like, you know, you have the vision versus right. like a lot of content creators where it's like, I'm going to be a whole new person tomorrow, like wherever the fucking winds take me. You know, that's like a, it's a mission statement. hundred percent. And I'm sure you guys feel this way too, right? Because a lot of people might know you guys just as to, you know, fit bros doing podcast. Yeah. But you guys have handsome geniuses. Handsome geniuses doing a podcast about fits, but y'all mm. obviously do a lot more than that. Absolutely. Right? Y'all have a whole operation. Y'all about to get into the merch business. Yeah. You guys have whatever you guys are doing right now is just the tip of the iceberg. Right. That's and true. 
for most consumers, for them to just know me as the food guy, they don't know me as Righteous Eats or Jakey right. Cho. They just know me as, yo, that's the Asian guy that told me where <laughs> to get that pizza. <laughs> I mean, that's the majority, right? Yeah. And the, the other 20% who actually understands the bigger mission, that's the people that we really need to focus on serving. Sure. So all this, Jakey, incredibly righteous stuff. Mm. Um, very admirable, very honorable. But what are the least righteous things about you? <laughs> the least righteous thing about me? Yeah, besides yeah. that you steal samples. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. I mean, the least righteous thing about me, bro. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah dude. I mean, <laughs> shit. This is on the record, too. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying Forever. to find the right answer. That's fair. We could buy some time. I'm like thinking about my search history. <laughs> oh, no. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. thinking about like, you know, some of the transactions that I made. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. You know the transaction saying? history. Yeah. And I think Your that kind of gives everybody an idea. Okay. I mean, you were, again, with alumni, you were present in the Wild Wild West early days of streetwear. Mm. Right? So like, what maybe it wasn't always about boards. Maybe that's like where it's, you know, the least right. You know shit. what? Actually, that's a very good question. Because uh, during my time um, working with alumni, you know, I saw, um, I saw the unfortunate reality of the sneaker, the sneaker game. Oof. Oh, the backdooring. You know I mean, not only the backdooring, but it's just like, just straight up unnecessary greed. <laughs> you know, <what> yeah. I mean? <laughs> like I'll give you one instance, right? So, alumni, one of the locations was in Crown Heights on Utica and Union. Now, it's a working class neighborhood. That's out there. It hasn't fully been gentrified yet, and I hope it doesn't. Inshallah. Um, on Friday, I saw a long line down the block of older ladies and gentlemen with their laundry carts waiting for uh, free food from, uh, from a local church. Mm -hmm. On the same block on Saturday in front of alumni, Parents and kids were waiting online to buy the Jordan 11s. Mm. So this is happening in the same neighborhood. Yeah. And you put that into perspective, right? Like, yo, this is a neighborhood where people need help getting free food, but it's also the same neighborhood where people are willing to dish out $240 because of, you know, self-esteem. Yeah, it's because you know the dissonance pair, is palpable. You know this this pair of shoes is gonna give this young man, you know that that pride and that ego to go to school and you know feel feel something that he isn't able to obtain, you know, in, in his community. Which I genuinely believe these corporate companies have a full understanding of what they were doing. You know, what I mean, in terms of the number of colorways that they were putting out, right? The number of releases that they were dropping. And on top of that, the business model was if you want 24 pairs of this particular hot item, you need to buy an entire collection of duds that you, yeah. they know that you're going to have to put that shit on sale. Right. You know what I'm saying? So Fortune. it's like, yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? You guys are publicly traded companies. Y'all yeah. got to report to Wall Street every year. Yeah. And y'all need to grow your sales numbers. Mm -hmm. But how does that impact? these communities that is not thinking in that for the small businesses and also the small businesses that are just trying to, you know, like, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Nike, for instance, right. You're essentially on a, you're essentially on a hamster wheel, right? Cause you buy shit on credit and you got to pay that shit back. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So you, if you have like a quarter million, half a million credit line, that means you're racking that shit up and you got to pay it back. So mm -hmm. you have to come back the next season to you know, right. buy more It shit. never stops, like you're saying. It never stops until they drop you. Right. <laughs> until they decide. Until they decide to drop you. Yeah. So, for That's instance, fucked. like some businesses have been in, with Nike before the sneaker hype in the late 80s. A lot of them were grandfathered in. But if they consider you not as an asset, it's so quick for them to drop you when your business is like 75 to 80% of your business was Nike. Yeah. Right. That's, that's an immediate death sentence. And if you push back, they say, just do it. <laughs> just fucking do it. There he is. You know what I mean? mean? Gentlemen. Well, you made, I don't know if that, I mean, it seems like that was maybe played a part in uh, you recognizing the, the fucked upness of the, the sneaker world and just the world of like material goods and consumption. Um, and eventually you made the full-time pivot to righteous eats. 
I mean, you kind of mentioned that, you know, maybe it is just because you're the Asian guy that recommends pizza with the fire voice that <laughs> is real. Isn't real. We still is it real? Is it real? Is the voice real? I, I don't think it's real. It's, you should okay. hear this okay. guy off camera. Yeah, I know, squeak, right? Dude. Do you think you'd be successful if you had a Mickey Mouse pipsqueak ass voice? <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think so. No, really? you know, no, I don't think so. Because what if it was like the the extreme bass that you have now. It was like extreme falsetto. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this JK Joe. I think it probably would have gotten attention on a different spectrum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 Different yeah. target demo. Yeah. 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 Now, but you know, like that's a very interesting point because I think everybody brings certain type of utility, right? Like, right. cause you know, initially when the content started to pop off, a lot of people, the comments, you, you read the comments and you see what the attention was coming from, mm -hmm. you know, like, a lot of ladies were saying like, yo, I like this guy's voice. Like an ASMR type vibe. You know what I mean? And I was like, yo, and it, it wasn't like I intended. Right. Like right. It, I didn't go in there thinking like, yo. As someone that knew this man before TikTok, this has always been his voice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it wasn't like I went in there with the intentions like, yo, I'm going to just fucking make this shit as deep as possible and then yeah. try to, you know. Like uh, Charlie Tuna from Jurassic <laughs> 5. <laughs> Damn deep cut, dude. Wow. James, <laughs> yo, bro, like you're really great at this, man. I, I, <laughs> oh man, Thank yo, you. I'm I'm like genuinely impressed Thank having okay. this combo. At Jurassic Five references, yo, yeah, that's where the bar's a, at. That shit's a deep cut reference, yeah. bro. <laughs> Maybe Concrete Schoolyard can be the outro. Oh, we don't do outro music anymore. Okay, so the ladies love the deep voice. Yeah. What else was the utility that you were bringing to the platform? So with Righteous Eats, I went in there with the intention that we're not just gonna highlight the food. We're gonna talk about the stories behind the food. So we made sure that we had interaction with the ownership. Yeah. We also uh, asked the owners to get access to the kitchen, which a lot of these mom and pop joints, when we first started back in 2020 and 2021, they were all like, why do you want to come into the kitchen? What are you trying to document? You know, here? what are you, what are you trying to do? You yeah. try to steal the recipe. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, <laughs> so we told them like, nah, like we just want to showcase how these dishes come about and since then, a lot of other content creators that are in our field, I noticed that they have mm -hmm. probably, I mean, not saying that we were the direct no, inspiration, of course not, but, but, you know, I started seeing a shift in the way that these restaurants are being highlighted. Interesting timing so, there. So when you perceive biting, how does that make you feel? <laughs> Um, I'm flattered. Yeah? Yeah. For, is flattered. that the PC on the record answer? No, nah, I mean, for real, though. Like, think about it, right? Like, so, yo, um, can you really blame a certain ball player for picking up MJ's spin moves? Fair. Wow. I'm fantastic, not saying I'm MJ, fantastic but- Fantastic analogy. I'm not saying I'm MJ on yeah. the record. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, yo, if you have- like, The Kobe I don't know, step bro. back. Yeah, like, you know, like if if a certain rapper, like so many rappers from the 90s were inspired by Cool G Rap and Rakim, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's Nas or Hove, all these guys were inspired yeah. by them. So can you really- But rappers also beef over flows being stolen, et cetera. So. Yes. But ultimately, yes. it's a good thing that people were inspired by Rakim and- Yeah, 100%. And, and I cool think it's a Key great and... thing that people were- <laughs> Moves our form forward. Yeah, like that they want to start talking to the restaurant tours, that they want to start highlighting the story behind the food. I think it's a great thing. So that, okay, okay, fair, fair enough. But let me ask you this. Is that TikTok bump that a restaurant gets, right? is that necessary from, like from like a viral review or people just like, oh shit, I gotta go travel out here, whether it's like fucking Four Charles or some spot out in like Jackson Heights, is getting a TikTok bump necessarily a good thing for a restaurant? I think it's a gift and a curse, honestly. Okay. Okay. Um, the gift is obvious, right? The gift more is, revenue, yep. more tension, more sustained, uh, business what's the curse aspect of it well sustained not necessarily right well totally yeah definitely not i mean that initial bump might you know get you a rush just like all that, bumps baby yeah. <laughs> you could be overwhelmed <laughs> but yo. you might get a bump but can you get the bag you know? <laughs> hey yo, yo wow no nah, no nah, for real though like yeah that's a seafood restaurant you get the fish scale yeah <laughs> okay i'll stop wow <laughs> no stop. don't stop dude the gentleman is on one man wow yo somebody give this guy an award you know he's won a pulitzer this I guy have, have. you know but okay so yeah so okay so you get that bump right yeah, you get that you get initial that rush of, of attention and dollars what's the cursed uh side of the so a lot coin? of these restaurants uh unfortunately a lot of them are not prepared for this new influx of clientele. And what ends up happening is the kitchen gets bombarded, the front of the house service 
might become more lackluster. Mm -hmm. And the clientele that's coming in, they're not necessarily uh, looking at it from the perspective of a person in the hospitality industry, understanding or sympathizing with what they're going through. They're just trying to get the sushi or, you know, the, the baklava, whatever it may be, yeah. and get the fuck out of there. Patrons in New York are usually some of the least sympathetic people on earth, I would say. They're also always in a rush. Yes. You know what I mean? So, and they, they might not have the wherewithal or the understanding that, you know, that lackluster experience that you've had, it was just a one-time thing because of this restaurant sure. is going through this rush. Now, whatever it is, they might go up, go home and write a Yelp review or a Google review. And that might damage the restaurant in the long run. And now during the bump, the rush, you Mm -hmm. know, um, the restaurant might feel like, okay, cool. Like now I have to hire more staff. Now they hire like three more line cooks and five more front of the house people. But when the rush dies down, now you have all this new payroll that you have to take care of. So now the restaurant is also stuck because now they have to churn out more bread, but the money isn't, right. you know, as it was when the viral moment was happening three months ago. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I mean, like, you know, when we highlight a restaurant and we feel like this video is going to have a moment, we try to uh, check in with them and tell them like, yo, like, make sure that, you know, you have some temporary staff and- yeah. You give them a heads up. That, yeah, understand that this might just be a temporary right. moment. And if you sell out, don't try to overdo it. Just yeah. tell people that you're sold out. It's kind of like in Bar Rescue. I feel like uh, whenever they, they're they like, okay, yeah, we're having a great week. And then like yeah. the epilogue is like, six months <laughs> yeah, later, closed. this place closed down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's very unfortunate, yeah. right? Because do 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 viral TikTok f- restaurant reviews bring a certain type of customer that is only there to like flick up the most like IG friendly dish or just to like say they were there? digitally plant a flag and then fucking bounce and never return for business and not become a regular, like support it in the long term. Great question. I think at one point it did, but now viral TikTok, IG, you know, YouTube shorts have become such a, you know, screen time is synonymous regard. Like there's no difference for a person watching things on Netflix, YouTube shorts, or, you know, just on their laptop. Right. It's screen time. So I I guess what I'm trying to say is that it became so much more egalitarian, like it's reaching everybody. Mm. So like TikTok and or specifically, I would say Instagram is no longer a nice to have. It's a it's a must for these restaurants. A need to have. Yeah, Yeah, it's a need to have. So I think it's touching everybody. It's not just, you know, the, the clout chasing, you know, IG. Yeah. You know, like I got to make sure that I. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got to make sure that I, you know, like post about this. Yo, real quick, going back to the Yelp and Google reviews thing. Do you ever read that shit before you go check out a place? Um, I mean, I've done it in the past, but a lot of the recommendations that we get have directly come from members of the community. Right. And, um, you know, I don't know if you've seen this one video where this gentleman breaks down that the best Chinese restaurants have three stars. Three stars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I think there is a level of truth to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the Karens are giving, you know, the Szechuan's too spicy, right? Yeah, or right. Fuck, or so. like, yo, the service wasn't good. Well, miss, <laughs> you know, the service was never good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? right, right. You so, can't eat service. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. If you were expecting the, the, the waiter to fill up your water cup yeah. five times. Sing you happy of, birthday, whatever the or fuck. Or any of that, then I, I don't think this restaurant was meant for you. <laughs> yeah, that's you know? true. Have you ever been to a restaurant where maybe they like, hired a POC as a crisis actor to be like, yo, J key, like we're struggling. This is the owner. Like they immigrated here from like a war torn country yeah, and they're a refugee. Not yet. Okay. Not mm, yet. That, that you know of. Yeah. Not that I know of. Not yeah. yet. Okay. Uh, it's my first meal they, since coming over from Sudan. Like yeah. I'm fucking, I love this. Place. But if I get hollered by a restaurant group and it's like that narrative from the jump, they probably got that idea yeah. from you. Oh, <laughs> My my nonna, she come over from Italy. She has a little restaurant named Carbone. Yeah, she loves the spicy <laughs> rigatoni. Shout out to Carbone, man. Shout out major food group. Wow. Fucking major. Yeah, major. You, are there restaurants you don't you won't review because you actually want to gatekeep? Because like, ooh, because mm. it's like a neighborhood spot or that you know you go to with your wife yeah. or with with the homies that you actually don't want to. Nah, I actually up. no, because you know I actually want all restaurants to win. You know, it doesn't matter, like, you know, gatekeeping for what? You know, you got information by the hand in 2024 and beyond. So, and also if you gatekeep and that restaurant ends up 
not being able to pay, you know, whatever the loans that they have, or yeah. the rent that they have, right. and all because the overhead because that you're they selfish have, ass. Because yeah. of my selfish act of wanting to just, right. you know, hold on to that one particular sandwich. There'll be nothing behind the gate eventually. You like, know? bro, like, what are you doing? Yeah, your righteous you know knows no bounds. Yeah, man. Okay. What's your what's your bad what's righteous eats batting average on um restaurants that you feature that then shut down? <laughs> That's a great question. I think I hope of, it's a thousand. Sorry for laughing. I think out of all the restaurants that we've highlighted, you know, and we've highlighted hundreds at this point. Yeah. Um, I think we've the at least the ones that I know of that have closed since we've highlighted <sighs> them. I would, I would say it was like less than 10. Oh, dude, yeah. that's not bad. That's Otani, no, Otani numbers. Yeah, dude. Yeah, less than 10. Hell yeah. Yeah. Very thankfully. Yeah. yeah. Hang your yeah. fucking jersey in the rafters Absolutely. on those fucking <laughs> stats, dude. God damn. TikTok as a whole, though, I mean, in the food content, um, the food content creator portion of the app, which is like I the don't know, ecosystem, fifty percent of yeah, the app, yeah. are all the restaurants that get reviewed on TikTok truly that fucking fire, <laughs> or does the algorithm just reward the constant positivity and hyperbole around how sick the experience is? That's a very good question. I mean, thank you. Fuck, a lot of great questions over here, man. Pulitzer, yeah, you guys, Pulitzer. You guys, you guys are what we amazing. Did. No, I don't have one, but I want. You guys one. are great. Thank you. you guys are really great at what y'all do. Thank, Thank you. Dude. I hope we don't we're close down. Put that I out. I hope we're not, not, not part of the ten percent. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. All right. So I'm gonna because it could go, get a little like I'm gonna go into an anecdote. Eating. You okay, know what yeah. I mean? So when I first started, you know, highlighting these eateries, I instead of just pulling up on them, I started reaching out to them to to see like if we could get access to the kitchen, if right, we could right. talk to the ownership, like a journalist. <clears throat> mm. Truly. Yeah. I mean, and again, that's a privilege that we have considering our backgrounds. We understand fact checking. We mm -hmm. understand, you know, actually doing an interview. Yeah. The responsibilities that come with the access. Right. So a lot of the questions that I would get from the ownership was how much you trying to charge? Oh, well, shit. And mm -hmm. I did at that point, I had no idea that there was an entire market, almost a racket yeah. of content creators working with certain restaurants to mm -hmm. highlight payola spots, you know, in exchange for a fee. Now, if they are working as a marketing consultant, yo, that's fair game, right? Sure. I, I think all these restaurants, if they could afford it, it's totally legit for them to, you know, pay for it. You think a that's, fee. Ethic that's ethically fine? Because it's mean, just yeah, marketing. Because you're essentially a yeah. marketing agent, right? right? You know, you're you're running an agency to market these restaurants. Now, if you're going in there saying that you're reviewing the place, without disclosing the fact that you are getting paid by this restaurant in exchange for this highlight or review. Positive review. You know, yeah. a positive review. I think it gets a bit more muddy. You yeah, know what I mean? No and, shit. <laughs> and, and, which is why I never call my highlights a review. Oh. Because I don't go in there saying like, yo, this, this dish is subpar where I give you like eight out of 10 or whatever. What do you call it? I just call them a highlight okay. because the whole mission started with me wanting to highlight the spots that I personally enjoy. It's right. not an assessment. It's just like, um, you know, it's like, a, I don't know. Yeah. It's like my way of giving yeah. them flowers. Right. That's so mad interesting. You know, like I recently read um, Pete Wells, his mm -hmm. retirement piece. I mean, this guy said that, yo, I didn't put a single word down about an eatery until I visited this spot three times and tried like 70% of the menu. And that's why this guy now has gout. Yeah. yeah. So you know I'm tired. Mean? He's got that get money gut. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Jonathan Gold reviewed almost every taco stand on Pico Boulevard. That was like 13 miles. Yeah. But rest that in dude, peace to he, his soul. He died. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? So that's why I'm like, yo, what I do, it, and also because of, you know, our background, having you know, our background as journalists and, you know, working in media, like I have so much admiration for these guys that on what they do. Put their life on the line. I'm never going to be like, yo, what I do is a review. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like, like, I just can't do it with the, with, with the consciousness. You're featuring restaurants. You're highlighting them. Yeah. I'm highlighting them. I'm not reviewing them. So if you right. see a food content creator that's constantly just like, this place is the best place ever. Money? Yeah. They're, they're racked up. I wouldn't say all of them. Okay. You know what I mean? Because, yo, that, that might be that person's personality. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I have no fucking judge, sense of judgment. Yeah. I love everything. And also, I yo, lost my and taste to be fair, COVID. though, to be fair, <laughs> like, I'm never going to knock the hustle because I'm very fortunate that we're able to get 
these brand opportunities, which is paying for my bills. They supplement, and, you know, yeah, the that they're able to, you know, help me pay at these restaurants yeah, right, and not sure. take a, a check. You know what I mean? It's, but a lot of these content creators might not have the same yeah. access where, you know, the, the, the knowledge of going into a meeting with an agency and talking about KPIs and shit. Have you ever uh, gone into highlight a restaurant and you're like, yo, this food fucking sucks. Like, <laughs> yeah. What are we doing here? They don't deserve to we, be open. We, they should, they we, should find a new line of work. Like <laughs> this food is very them, bad. Dude. I try to look at it from, <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah, and this is a, this is a fact. Yo, I have a, my palate is mad amiable. Okay. Mm. Compared to my business partner. My business partner will straight up be like, yo, this shit's whatever. Trash. I'm like, yeah, I see what this dude is trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, you see the vision. Yeah, it's like, you can't <laughs> expect, vision. like, yo, you can't go to a hood fried chicken spot, expect a certain quality, and then go to Coco Doc, you know, the- the Which, the, by the way- I'd rather eat at the hood horrible. chicken spot. Coco Doc, <laughs> fuck that. Okay, we, we had the nuggets place. at the US Open. It's right, not right, the same. Right, right, but I'd rather eat at the hood chicken spot. $8 dollars a nugget? Are you shitting me? <laughs> Come on. Yo, Simon, you got to get on here. Come on. I'll go to Coat. <laughs> I'm not going to fucking Coco Doc. Word. Yeah, so he's like, I don't think you should be expecting the same quality word of service, you know? So it's yeah. all like- Context. Yeah, it's all context. It's context all is king. Yeah. yeah, it's all relative. Okay, all right. Um, well, look, I think that it's pretty clear that, you know, you love working in this world to highlight the underdogs, mm -hmm. the ones that don't have the resources that are like marginalized for whatever reasons. The voice, the um, voiceless. That are just like focused on the bottom line, right? And can't necessarily figure out or have the time or resources or bandwidth to figure out the marketing, and the social media and how to get new new dollars in the door. What's your least favorite thing about being a food content creator? I think the least favorite part is, um, I think we mentioned this earlier about, you know, you essentially become chained to the algorithm. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, cause now you have a standalone business, right? Like Righteous Ease, I always tell people, yo, this is not a nonprofit, <laughs> like, <laughs> this is a business. And the, the nature of this business is pumping out content we, you know, as content creators, what we do is we buy attention for cheap and sell it for more. Interesting. You know, that's how we operate this business, like yep. any other business, right? That's you, very true. Yeah. So when when that market is being shifted because of, you know, new algorithm changes by these platforms mm -hmm. that essentially just uses us, right. use us to feed their, um, you know, whatever it may User be. User base their user base, their advertisers. Yeah. The whole you know, thing. you do feel like, okay, how do we really get to own our audience? That's why when y'all were talking to me off camera about Patreon and Substack. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, bro, like I really need to do my studies and do the knowledge and yeah. really start investing into building my own community sure. instead of trying to rely on the algorithm gods that's just Yo, beyond but be our careful, control. Cause at a certain point, then your audience can also own you. 100%. Ooh. Has you the algo I mean? ever, have, have you ever sensed it's a, a switch up in the algo where it, it, it do be a fickle mistress and you're like, hold up, like we're not getting. Yeah, yeah, attention. all the time. I'm shadow banned. Yeah, all the time. All we the time. We got to pivot to Smash Burgers. All <laughs> the time, all the time. You know, like, was it a coincidence that, you know, we highlighted a few Palestinian eateries and oh, it started to get. Speak on it. It started to get banned on TikTok. Oh, Damn. I don't know. Shit, bro, no. bro, never go to a, on TikTok. I would, I would suggest just a hunch. Maybe don't uh, highlight a Uyghur restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, was it a coincidence? Who knows? I don't know, man. Stick to bagels yeah. and schmear. And I maybe not that. a, maybe not a, uh, <laughs> I, I think your Taiwanese food highlight, your restaurant highlights might get a, who knows, point bro. on TikTok. Who knows, right? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Oh, man, that's crazy. Fuck. Shit gets political across fucking all different fucking lanes of content these days. Yeah. Right? Everything is political. It's well, crazy. yeah. Look, I think though, you know, at this point, I think I mean, you, we call, you call yourself a food content creator. Yeah, hundred percent. Food I, personalities, though, just like across history, whether that's TV, right? Uh, critics, cookbook authors. Yeah. Who are your favorite food personalities of all time? You mentioned Pete and Jonathan already, and the right. respect you have for them. Right, right. Um, yeah, like obviously the great late Tony Bourdain. Mm. I mean, I think that's an obvious. Um, you know, uh, shit. Like I, I have a lot of love for uh, my big bro, uh, Roy Choi. Mm. Um, I mean, he's more of, I wouldn't say he's a food personality. I mean, he's a chef and a restaurateur who also happens to be 
on Netflix once in a while. You know yeah. what I mean? So public I have a facing lot of, guy. Public yeah. facing guy. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for him. He's always shown. How many shown, people discovered Korean tacos because of that man? Yeah. And, um, and he's, he's somebody who's always looking out for his little bros. You know what I mean? Even when I was just like a young kid coming out of college, like working with some musicians, we were all broke. This dude would always like, you know, be a pull up to the truck, pull up to my restaurant. I got you. Take care of us. Like he just always showed us love. Yo, who do you need to get connected to? Yeah, I'll make that warm intro. You know what I mean? So he's mm. just a real solid individual. Um, each one, teach one. You know, I, 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 you know, coming from Queens and, um, you know, used to work for Double XL and just being in the hip hop space. I've always had a lot of admiration for action. Oh, sure. You know what I mean? Bronson for what he does. Um, and I think Baka. he has such a unique way of approaching and telling stories behind food because he doesn't go in there with this academic hubris. You right. know what I mean? He just talks about it like how you would talk talk to your friends about it. You know what Spits I mean? bars, dude. Has, yeah. there been, has there ever been any righteous eats, fuck that's delicious or action? Uh, I mean, if the opportunity ever comes, like, I mean, yo, I'll be, I'll be more than honored. You know what I mean? But not yet. And uh, I got to give a shout out to Eddie, Eddie Huang. Oh, oh dude, our you guy. Big shout out Eddie. Hope yeah, you're well, yeah, buddy. Yeah. Eddie, you know. Can't he, wait to see that doc on Vice fucking everyone over. Oh, yeah, dude. It's <laughs> going to be a fucking movie. Right? Yeah, I mean, Eddie's, <laughs> Eddie's just, he's you know, man, he's, he's incredible. Do you ever extremely you intelligent. Local <laughs> no, I've never been, actually. Well, I've never been not to that you his remember, four local really. parties. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, man, Dave I mean. Chang? What, are you, what are your thoughts on? I mean, I, I think I think what he's accomplished as an entrepreneur and as a um, just just a tycoon is incredible. A titan. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's that incredible. pivot to CPG, I feel like some small yeah. businesses can yeah. learn a lot from that because yeah, that's yeah. now like what they're they're not really you know it's not restaurants anymore. 100 percent. i have I have the utmost respect for what he's done you know what i mean as a businessman yeah you know you but take out your competitors at any cost you know what, I mean? <laughs> what chili crisp are you buying though so that's actually a, a good question because um you know a, a friend of righteous eats who recently passed who started uh 16 handles his name is simon um his name is the um, yogurt the, Sol- the froyo yeah, place yeah, solomon no, that shit was solomon. my jam so he he was a very close friend of the brand because he's like best friends with my business partner. So before Solomon passed, he actually shared his thoughts about, you know, the whole chili crisp gate. Yeah. And uh, we actually have a video um, that's online about how, you know, Solomon had his own legal run-ins with Chang when- um, Over Froyo? N- over uh, when, you know how- uh, the milk bar had a cereal flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, I think, really good. I think Solomon had something that was called oh, similar. Okay. And then, you know, they called him. The and, cereal you know, milk type shit. Where like Damn. milk. So Solomon called it milk cereal versus cereal <laughs> milk or some <laughs> shit. And yeah, then, you know, wars. so yeah, like I think, you know, Chag was telling Solomon that he's going to sue him, whatever, whatever. And, you know, Solomon was just like, yo, like, Say less, man. I'll take the shit down. You know I mean? like, <laughs> Damn, you're you diabolical. Go, you don't have to go all the way over there. But anyways, <laughs> I'm like butchering this story. Oh, but no, no. You rest in peace to Solomon. Did Ronnie Fig ever get involved with kiff treats? Or <laughs> that would have been a bloodbath. Curious, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curious about that. Yeah. What about uh current uh food content creators? Who are your favorites? Yeah. Yo, um, I have a lot of love for um, you know, my boy uh, uh Marco. Um, this is like, this is what New York eats. He does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's I've seen his shit. I've yeah, been served that up. Yeah. He's a, he's a real dude from the Lower East Side. You know what I mean? Like Italian American, one of the, you know, like last of the Mohegans really from that area. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he says this openly like, yo, he had like a huge gambling addiction. He Fire. was like a blue collar New York city guy that used to work for the city. And then, yo, like one thing led to another. He just decided to go full on to become a food content creator. Yeah, like when Eric I, Adam could take a page out of his book. <laughs> yeah, <for real. laughs> and, you know, when I see someone like him, you know, like he doesn't have the media experience that people like we do. Right. But he come from where he came from and he's able to pivot and tell the story in such a meaningful way. And now he has a whole career as a Because he's authentic creator. though, right? Like, yeah, yeah, and he's real. You know, he's a real dude, 100%. You know? So a lot of love for him. Um, you know, uh, who, who else, man? I'm, tr- I'm blanking out. Uh, a friend of ours, uh, uh, Brian Can't Stop Eating. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he yeah, might yeah, have yeah, a problem. Yeah, yeah. Is, he, is he okay? <laughs> yeah, what's... I, I think he's uh, he's slowed down a bit. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, good budget. job, Brian. His TP budget must be crazy. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, man. So yeah, I mean, th- those two are the people that I could think nice. off the top. Yeah. Okay. Got to ask you this. Oh, here we go. What is Jakey Cho's hottest food take or your most unpopular opinion on food? <sighs> Hold up. Hottest food take. Um, yeah, let's piss yo, people off. I, I think... I think pineapple pizza doesn't deserve all the slandering Thank that you. has been given. I agree. I yeah, think, it's good. I think that's salty, sweet. sweet. Yeah. Salty, sweet. Sweet, salty balance is actually incredible. If you're like, if you want that, if you're like, I'm in the mood for that, that is an acceptable thing. 100%. Right? 100%. Yeah, man. Like, I mean. What would Anthony say? Oof. I don't know. That's a very good point. I have no idea. But also, it's like. It's a personal preference, yeah. right? But I, Slow down. Have a pint. Have the pineapple on pizza. Have two slices. Yeah, man. I, I love it. The sweet and salty combination, I think it's incredible. It's in and yang. It's is, that your go, is that your go-to pizza order? It's definitely not my go-to <laughs> pizza order. But, you know, once in a while, if I see it, if I see it at like some community board meeting, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm not going to say no to it. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be like, yo, I'll fuck with this shit. It's also like a pretty, it's like a Caribbean thing. It's like an Asian thing. It's a pretty like... It's not New York, right? right? But it is like a pretty global fucking- Totally. And we also have to acknowledge that a majority of the world, unless you are from the tri-state, your first exposure to pizza in the 20th century probably kicked it off with something from Pizza Hut Mm. or Domino's. Yeah, Yeah. now pizza. What is the best pizza in New York City, in your opinion? (sighs) Damn, that's a loaded question. I know. Um, This is going to get you in trouble. I think it depends on the occasion. Can I give you a few options? Yeah, of course. Okay, so- you know, when I have guests coming over from out of town, I always take them to uh, uh, Table 87 on Atlantic Avenue. Okay. Um, it's like coal fire pizza joint. Okay. It's a neighborhood joint, but they also have like a successful CPG product. You know, it's really good. So that's more like, you know, coal fire. Like it's it's not too far from the uh, the Brooklyn Promenade. You know what I mean? Like that whole combination is ill. If I want like a slice right off the subway, there's a spot in Flushing, Queens called um, Lucia's. Okay. That's been there for like 50 plus years. Is it Asian owned? Nah, it's, um, I think it started off like Italian. Now I think the gentleman, he's from like Iran or some shit. I, I could be wrong. Right. That's a, sli- a, that's a slice spot. It's a slice spot. And you know, the thing with slice spots is all about churning because mm. you want to get that fresh slice. So you need a place with high foot traffic True. or you need a place that is already popping like a more in um, Whitestone. Mm. That's also a classic spot. But yeah, man, I mean, that's pretty much about it. I mean, your Spumoni Gardens and, Luca- uh, you know, Lucali's and all these spots are classics, you know, for, for what it is. Yeah. But I don't think they d- necessarily need additional cosign than <laughs> right. what they already yeah, get. Yeah. One yeah. last spot. There's a spot called uh, Farina, Farina in Carroll Gardens. They have an oven that was like an Irish bread oven that's been like that's been there for like 150 years. Shit, yeah. They recently uh Shit it was recently boat. taken over by an Italian um second or first generation Italian gentleman named Michael. And um yeah, they they make incredible That's a pies cultural over there. Voltron, dude. Irish yeah. and Italians coming yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's it's an incredible spot. So okay. do you think noted gourmand Dave Portnoy is qualified in his pizza reviews? <laughs> Because people, um, people look at him as a fucking, you know, yeah. as like the vanguard of like what he says is like as good as gold. Yeah, one bite. Everybody knows the rules. That's, that's actually a great point. To be honest, I don't know anything about that gentleman except that he has a very successful business and he loves gambling. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sounds like your boy Marco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have like, a lot in common, dude. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, man, I mean, I've seen his reviews and I think, yeah. you know, He's As, probably putting his 10,000 slices, right? Right. At this point, he's, so there's like... He probably now knows a lot more about pizza than the average person at absolutely. this point. I mean... He learned on the job. He learned on the job, 100,000. 100, well, speaking of that uh, pasty honky, is it true that white people can't season their food at all? I think white people in general... Uh, fuck. I think it depends on the white... I, I mean, are like Southern Italians considered white? Well, they used to not be. Now I think they are. Same with the Irish. Um, I don't know. Fucking whiteies, bro. Like gentrifiers. <laughs> gentrifiers? Yeah. Word. The people eating peppers on Rivington Street. Not, oh, okay. in, not in Flatbush. Yeah, yeah. You know what it is, man? I think because of access to technology, information, I think the white palate 
has elevated and has been diversified. <laughs> the whites are evolving. Yeah, you know dude. what I mean? Just like everybody else, Just like man. the pogs. Yeah, yeah, like, cause I, you know, like, <laughs> They're out here going to Sichuan restaurants. Yeah. You know what I mean? Popping peppercorns. Yeah. You know what I mean? Doing outlandish shit. Yeah. So like, yo, hey, I, Chad, I respect you want to try this peppercorn? Yeah, yeah, I respect it, man. All right. The whites are evolving. 100,000. Like their, fucking Pokemon, Both dude. in their booties and their, and their palettes. You know what I mean? Went from a Pikachu to a Raichu. Yeah. Yo, speaking of fucking white people, <laughs> what memories do you hold with you? From that oh, yeah. New York Magazine photo shoot. Oh, word. From hell. That yeah. we all yeah. participated in. <laughs> yeah, did you have a good time? We had a bad time, but we turned it into a lot of content for the pods. So I was mad, mad confused the whole time. Right? Yeah, I was confused. What I, the hell was that? Imagine if you're not even on TikTok and you were there, like us. I mean, we use it for clips for the pod, right, but we're right. not TikTok content creators. I was confused. And to be honest, like, you know, they were like, yo, we're going to meet at Bad, Ro- bad Roman. Right? Yeah, that, yeah, was, yeah, that, yeah. Was the, that was Emphasis the Emphasis on the bad. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever highlighted Bad Roman? Not the yet. Columbus Circle fucking stalwart piece of shit? Not yet, but <laughs> not, you know. That shit sucks. <laughs> not yet. And I, I didn't really get to eat the food. I think my table. You're lucky. Yeah, my table we was. Uh, I forget who was at my was table. prop food that you yeah, could. Yeah, like, I, had some, I had some uh, TikTok food review, reviewers, the VIP list girls, who. Much respect. They give brutally honest reviews yeah, of restaurants true. where they, they don't pull any punches and not everything's fire. They definitely lean negative, but as like their thing, but they're not just like, oh, this is the best spot, like 10 out of 10 every but single time. If a place is good and you haven't been there, they do tell you to kill yourself. So there's yeah. that to consider <laughs> as well. That God damn. Yeah. 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 So you never heard these, these chicks go off. Yeah. Not yet. I'm about to go find out. <laughs> yeah. Yo, the VIP list. Yo, they're great. tap they're in, great. dude. You're gonna yeah, love it. I'm gonna had, find we, out. We had beef with them, and we're like, we gotta end this beef. We're yo, scared. I know, dude. They are, are they not gonna be- are they gonna come into the Terra Dome? Are they gonna? <laughs> pull uh, they've up? been there. I think they own the Terra Dome. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So do you like? Do you have to, you, It was just weird, right? Yeah. It, it was, was an interesting off. experience, man. Like I, I honestly thought that it was going to be a bit more like communal, where we actually get to know each other and we get to have a conversation, but it was just a photo op. Instead of yeah. Ryan Serhan trying to sell you a fucking $25 million penthouse in- Nah, he's in, cool though. We uh, fuck uh, with Ryan Serhan. Yeah, Ryan's, Ryan's the man, man. You oh, know you know him? Mean? Yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, he invited me to one of his podcasts in the past. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's a good dude. Damn, you know what I mean? He's always on. A yeah. mutual yeah, I mean, guest. We had him on back on. in the day he's too. always on, bro. Well, he's a real estate agent, dude. 100,000. Real yeah. estate agent, former, I think, aspiring actor who yes, turned into a real estate agent. that's why he's so agent. handsome. Yeah, former yeah. podcast guest of our, mm-hmm. of yeah, our yeah, yeah, former yeah. podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's bring it back to food, though. When you enter a restaurant, is there anything where they'll clue you in? You're like, yo, I am not in for a good time. Like, what will instantly ruin a meal for you at a restaurant? That's a good point, man. Um, it's different for everyone. Yeah. Hmm. I think red if, flag. If if the red flag is um, if the waiter or I guess the the person behind the register or the you know like the counter, they just seem like you could just tell like they don't want to be there. Mm. That's usually the first. <laughs> so red all flag. of them. So <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you go to certain restaurants, you know, like the owner is genuinely happy to be there. Like right. this motherfucker probably went to like Restaurant Depot, picked up like thirty pounds of potatoes and. He just already had a long day from 5 a.m., but yeah, he's right, still right. fucking happy to yeah. be there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know that you're going to get, even if the food you might not necessarily agree with, you know you're going to have, yeah. you know, a piece of this motherfucker's soul. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, <laughs> yo, like, you pull up to a joint, you know, there was like this uh, a pie chain, you know, that that went like in pie, and out. Like pumpkin pie? No, nah, it was like some Australian pie chain that was in New York in and out. Oh, meat pie type stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I forget the name. Pause. Cream but pie? I, <laughs> fuck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. So I forget what the name is. That that's how bad it was because yeah. they opened up like bullishly, like fucking 30 locations in New York in Man. like a span of a year. And I remember pulling up to this one location near Tom's. Was it like Harold Square where like Penn Station? Mm-hmm. Dog, like the members of the team were like aggressive that I was there. <laughs> like they, they, they were like, why the fuck are you here to yeah. try to eat this pie? We're about to go on because strike. They, they knew it was such dog shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and they were getting mad at me for mm-hmm. wanting to buy some shit from this establishment. Like, don't, like, wink, don't do it, dog. But, it, but they were doing it in a way where they were like, yo, like trying to like, they were picking on like what I was trying to <laughs> ask them and shit. I was like, yo. The fuck? You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to I'm trying to get y'all paid over here. Yeah. So if the environment is so bad that the Hostile. employees themselves are just don't want to be there, you know you're not in 
hundred percent. You're even not. If, but the food could, even if the food is fucking gas, you're like, nah. This I don't think the food could be gas if the employees there look like they don't want to be there. Yeah. True. Hostility does not equal righteousness. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. All right. So yeah, read the room. Yeah. 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 What about uh? What's the opposite? Like as soon as you walk into a spot, what clues you in that you're in for a fire meal? Ooh. Um. I mean, a C on a C health rating. <laughs> yeah, that helps. <laughs> um. I think it's usually for me when I see people that started to collect AARP issues yeah, yeah. and is collecting <laughs> like social security yeah. and you see a bunch of them hovering around, Ooh. you know what I mean? Like vultures. Like they're like either in there where they might have like a newspaper that's opened up <laughs> in a language that is not English. Right. That's when you kind of get a sense like, all right, yeah. this spot is legit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, you know, they, those people are usually very difficult to please. Yeah, they've right. seen it all and they've ate it all. Just they've based been, on they've fucking been through war. quantity of life. Yeah, they've, they've been, been through, through they've famine. Been, they've been <laughs> through famine. Feast and famine. They've yeah. lost children. Yeah. 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 They've lost friends. And for them to have a moment of solace mm. in this little, you know, eatery in the outer outskirts of Brooklyn or Queens, yeah. you kind of know that, yo, this, pl- this spot is official. Yeah. Trust your elders. Yeah, for sure. They have the ancient wisdom channeling through them. Totally. Their forefathers and foremothers. Totally. That have brought them to the spot. Yep. For solace and plat, plat- no, I don't know. Placidness. Placidness. Peace. 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 Awesome, yeah. bro. Peace and comfort. Yeah. Speaking of comfort, what's your comfort food when you're having a shitty day? When Jakey's feeling a little blue? When I'm feeling a little blue, I get, I, I usually get two things. One, I get a, a fat burrito. Mm. Ooh. Uh, it's called, uh, I get it from this one spot that's not too far from my crib. Uh, they have this thing called a, a, burri- a bur- burrito chingon and they put like, what'd you call uh, me? That's, that's what they call it. Burrito <laughs> chingon, uh, is from a spot called chicken taco is a food truck. It's called chicken taco. The name of the spot is Great chicken taco. SEO. Yeah, this is why they need people like you. Dude. Exactly. You know what I mean? Maybe that's why they haven't blown up yet. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? No, but, that's great SEO. No, you're like, yo, I want tacos. Oh, this spot's open. Chicken taco, baby, on Church Avenue, burrito chingon. And then they What's put like, they put, you know, it's different types of meat. You know what I mean? But they, one thing that they put in, they put a, a, a dry chipotle, a chipotle Ooh. pepper. Oh, nice. That gives it that extra kick. Yeah. So I usually get that or I go to the spot in Flushing on 162nd Street called Pak Sambal Kukbap. You know, again, horrible SEO because if you don't speak Korean, you don't know what the That's fuck exactly. that right. means. I was, saying, I was gonna ask what language that even is. I don't even know what Pak Sambar means. <laughs> really? You know what I mean? But I know Kukbap means soup rice. It's basically a, a, a common Korean dish where they serve it to you with a soup, a broth, with rice Hell yeah. and a bunch of side dishes. Delicious. The soup, sorry, the soup and the rice are, is it like a kanji? They're mixed in or they're separate? Nah, nah, it's separate. Okay, okay. It's separate. So it's always served. Yeah, it's, it's build your own adventure. Oh, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. piping hot. The broth probably has been boiling in that, on the stove for at least six to seven hours. Oh. Came out the cold. You know what I mean? Delicious. Yeah. And that shit just shakes off all types of diseases, <laughs> all types of evilness. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cleanse your soul. It purifies your soul. Yeah. You Hell know yeah. what I mean? So that shout out to Pak Sambal Kukbap on 162nd Street Flushing. Shout them out. The lady, I kept asking her like, yo, can I come through and highlight this spot? She like, nah, I don't need it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's busy. So I highlighted yeah. it regardless. Right. And it got even more busy. And um, yeah, man, the lady's like, yeah, I don't need it until uh, I pulled up one day for like some New York mag highlight, you know, and I, you know, I had like a non-Korean photographer with me. Yeah. And that's the thing with a lot of older Asian folks in our communities, man. They need to see a non-Asian <laughs> to know that this shit is official. It's legit. So it's like, yo, like this photographer homie came along and the lady's like, oh, he's valid. Like yeah. this motherfucker ain't like some fucking <laughs> run of the mill, like yeah, yeah. flushing goon kids trying to like. <laughs> Take advantage of me. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, shout out to Pak Sambar. Yeah. <laughs> is, there any, is there any food you think is gross? Um, I haven't come across really? any gross food yet. Yeah, not yet, bro. But what's that like the bottom of the power rankings? Like the thing you're least excited to eat? I mean, I don't want to eat dogs. Okay. okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Fair. That's yeah, sure. Like, and again, I, I don't judge people that eat dogs. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, yo, it is what it is. You know what, what I'm saying? What if they were somebody's pet? In certain coaches, like, yo, they eat dogs. Have you, know you been, have you ever been traveling where you were maybe a guest in someone's home and they offer you something that you weren't necessarily comfortable with eating on your own, but you 
maybe did because you're like a guest in their home and it'd be rude to- Not you know, yet. Not yet. Not yet. You know what I mean? I was in Columbia. They cut up like Some fish cow scale? foot. No. You know what I mean? That shit was banging, you know. The thing is, yo, like a lot of places outside of America, they eat all parts of the animal. Sure. Right? You know what I mean? Except like over here, like they just want to eat certain cuts. Right. So Korean culture, we eat everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? No uh, bone the left s- unturned. To the now's the knows the snout. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The snout to the tail. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Everything. So yeah. it's like, and I s- realized it's similar in a lot of other coaches. Like in Europe, you go to Spain, you go to Italy, they eat all parts of the cow as well. Meat so, and horse over there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's just like, you'll be surprised like how much similarities there are. You know, there's more similarities than differences in a lot of these coaches. Mm, of course. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful that being said. said, what is the wildest shit you've ever put in your mouth? Pause. Um, <laughs> up, up until this point. Oh, um, what is it? Uh, was it, what is that? Rocky Mountain Oysters? Y'all know testicles. what that is? Yeah. Yeah. Some cow, bull, bull testicles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, had that, I had that shit in uh, Different uh, in type of Denver. milk. Different type of milk. In Denver. <laughs> and I, I, it wasn't wild, but you know. It Do was, you like it? Yeah, shit was ill. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> like it made you ill? It was like double deep fried and shit. <laughs> oh, so. Like you couldn't even tell what it right. was. Damn, until they like, dressed up those nuts. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. Barbecue yeah. sauce, honey, what are we doing? Nah, man. Just, just, just the batter. <laughs> just the Raw batter. dog the nuts. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what was I saying? Are you a fast food guy? I like fast food. What's your, what's your number one? My number one, I would say, is in and out Yeah? Okay. I that, fuck with okay. in and out not like fast cat. That's like fast cash. Is it? No, no, it's fast it food. Really? All right. I mean, it doesn't move that fast. And I think it's also because it's, you know, we don't get access to it over here. Right. So it's not, it's a treat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like whenever I go to the West Coast, I'm like looking up, yo, this city got in and out and boom, that's What's where I'm heading up. In and out order. Uh, I get uh, animal style on the fries, mm. you know what I mean? Double patties. And then I get the cup. You know what I mean? Because they got the lemonades yeah. just readily available. Dude, like mustard grill, like mustard grilled, chopped chilies, anything oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah. I had all that shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Dress I love it up. In and out. Um, Make it real for me. I also like Shake Shack. You know, yo, funny story. So when I was an intern at Complex back in the late 2000s, mm-hmm. like I think 2008, mm-hmm. I was like 18 or 19 at the time. In Shout New York. Black album. In New York, there was only two in, uh, Shake Shacks at the time. One in downtown Manhattan, one in uh, uh, Madison Square Park. The, the OG? Yeah. Yeah. So Complex Office at the time was in the Mark Echo yeah. you know, building on 23rd Street. We were there. So I remember vividly Noah, Noah Callahan, Noah Callahan, NCB. Yes, you know Bever. I mean? yeah, Bever. Yeah, Bever. Don't forget the, yeah, never the, forget the Never Bever. forget the Bever. Never, never, never. <laughs> Can't forget the Bever. So Noah's like, yo, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go wait online at <laughs> what a the Shake Shack what at a Madison Square Park. Yeah. And when you're about to get done with the line, hit us up because oh. I'm going to take the editorial staff over to eat. And that line and must have been you, pissed. You know, yeah. you get to, you, you order whatever you want. Wow. That's real journalism lessons right there. You know what I mean? And this was <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I think now if any boss tells an intern to do that, like, yo, you're getting called out on Twitter. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? You're, you're probably getting can't get canceled. You're going to take a mental health day the next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. But at the time, you know, young J. Key, Ready to do whatever, man. Yeah, you know, sure. I was like, fuck yeah. You know what I'm saying? How I long did you wait in line? Do you remember? I, I just remember I listened to the Ready to Die album <laughs> twice. <laughs> twice. Is that a double? Is that a double album? Yeah. Nah, man. It was a same. Like, there was no, the first thing of Life After Death. Oh, That's okay, Life okay, After Death. Okay, okay, so yeah, I, yeah. I listened to Ready to Die twice. <laughs> and I was about turned to Turned it into done. a double album. Yeah, 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 yeah. turned it into a double album. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, man. And then, you know, I, I remember, I remember that instance vividly. And then anytime I eat Shake Shack now, I just remember how how long, how much I've come. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. The progress. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, NCB. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Fuck now. You, Yo, shout out to NCB, I'm man. Taste. Yeah. Shout out to I'm NCB. A Shake Shack and- taste. <laughs> Yo, because we love you, we're we're we want to ask a, a real question. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're a little concerned. What's your cholesterol looking like? Yeah. You healthy? Yo, man, my BMI <laughs> is not looking great. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did gain a lot of weight um, since I started Righteous Eats. But this past like 18 months, um, I've been running a lot more. Yeah. Right. And I kind of balanced things out a bit. Okay, good. You know, what I mean, you know, the thing is, man, like once you once you evolve from your 20s, the jawline never is the same. Mm. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? You gotta like, bring in the beard. You gotta fake you know I mean? it. Yeah, I'm it's like you, this shit is plastic surgery. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're covering it up. You know, it's a facade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the jawline isn't the same. The titties are getting a bit more mushy. Mm. You know what <laughs> I mean? Titties. Yeah. You know what I mean? The the fucking love handles are increasing. Yeah. yeah. You know, we got, all got to be cognizant of what we're consuming. So I've been trying. Shout to- out on. For helping us achieve on. our fitness goals. 100,000% movement is key, baby. Yeah. Is that the, that's their. That's thing. not even their tagline, okay. no, but no. I just said it. Well, they can have to be. So yeah, man. So, you know, I, I try to be active, you okay. know, and I've been, you know, there was one point when um, we would shoot like, cause we would bank all of these episodes, right? So like we would go out on like a Wednesday, hit up like four eateries. That is too many meals. And, I, day, and I pulled friends. up with four fits. Oh, you really? know what I mean, to make it seem oh, like, yo, it was a different day. But by the time you get to your third restaurant and, and you know, you get food fucked. You get the because, itis. Because these people, you know, these restaurant tours, they're, they're being very generous. They're yeah, like, yo, like, try eat this, more, try this. Yeah. eat this, eat that. And you, you, you don't want to be a dickhead. So right. you're like trying everything, at sure. least taking a bite. Yeah, at least. But all that shit adds up. It compounds, man. And you guys are, you're like a lean staff, right? You're lean and me. You don't have like a big crew. To nah, like bro. It's you, it, it used to be just me and one other guy pulling up to these eateries, man. Yeah. So all the leftovers will be like, yo, that's all you, baby. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Damn. That's like Taco Bell, fourth meal, dude. You're just yeah. on your fourth meal shit. That's yeah. too many. That's way yeah. too much food. So we, we've uh, we've scaled it down. Now we're okay. like, yo, let's just hit up like one restaurant a week. Okay. You know what I mean? And you're, what are you like the rest of the week? Are you eating like salads or what are you doing? Keep I it mean, light, simple. Watching yeah, your macros. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I don't do that. You know, I stopped doing like macros and keto and, right. you know, like intermittent fasting and all that. Like I stopped all of that. Um, but I, I do try to be cognizant, you know what I mean? And luckily- coming from a Korean culture where, you know, eating fermented food is the norm, mm-hmm. you know, like kimchi is just part of everything. I put kimchi in a taco, put kimchi in sure. everything. Good so for the gut. Yeah. For the gut, man. Well, you're, training gut. For, you're training for the marathon. What's going to be your post marathon meal? Yeah. Have you thought about that at all? Uh, Cross that finish line. Yeah. I mean, I think we can workshop it now if you haven't. You yo. Know? So after you do like a long run, you feel like shit, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Because your yeah. body temperature is all over the place. So like, you know, you kind of lose your appetite, mm. at least for like the first few oh, hours. Shit. Okay. You know what I mean? So I think what I want to do after this particular marathon is I'm going to hit the sauna. Okay. Ooh, sweat Korean Wait, bath what? house. You're going to you sweat know? more? Yeah, bro. Like just w- warm yourself. Lean like, yeah, into the yeah, skin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Calm right. yourself down. Maybe yeah. get a massage. Wash your ass. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Wash yeah. your ass. <laughs> wash all parts of your body. Yeah. <laughs> Calm down a little bit. And then, you know, start it off with some fruits. Okay. You know, grab some pineapple. Mm-hmm. Not the pizza. No. Just right, the right. pineapple. Okay. Some sugar. sugar yeah. You know what I mean? And then, um, and then, and then I'm probably going to go for a soup. You know what I mean? Like a sancocho. Ooh. Okay. You know what I mean? Shout out to all the Latino Americans. Mm. All you know I mean, so all of them, the whole entire populace. <laughs> yeah, so right, definitely so a fruit soup. And soup. A <laughs> fruit soup. and then soup. Yo, that's a crazy combo, dude. Yeah. And then a million beers. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> What's the best Korean barbecue spot in all of New York? Um, your favorite. I, your favorite. So no one best. When I'm in Manhattan, yeah. You know, because there's great places in uh, North Jersey. Shout out to Bergen County. There, the, uh, there are great places in Flushing, Queens. But if when I'm in Manhattan, I uh, I usually like to take guests to the spot called uh, 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 Yoon's Hyundai on 35th Street. Oh. So it's off the strip. Right. Like 32nd yeah, is yeah. where all the action is. Shout out to K-Town where so I lost we, my virginity. Is that right? Yeah. At MK, at the karaoke bar? <laughs> no, at the- la, Yeah, he got a private room, at dude. The, uh, at the La Quinta, <laughs> which is now, I believe, a Red Roof Inn. Is that right? Yeah. Interesting, awesome. man. Was it in the bathroom or was it- No, it was like, I, I got a room. <laughs> in, in a hotel room. He's yeah. a gentleman, dude. Was it, was it a professional that no, you lost it No, it was, with my, it was with my girlfriend at the time. Oh, okay, got you. Yeah. Was why? your girlfriend a professional? No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay. Nah, because, I mean, and K, it was K-Town and a hotel. Like, it was the cheapest hotel in Manhattan that like could would take, uh, I thought they'd take cash. Right. But instead, I had to ask a guy on the street to put it on his card. <laughs> and he was this like Korean gangster. He's like, yo- if you fucking ruin a TV or like I get billed for this, I, I he's like, I know where you live. I, I see your idea. I'm gonna fucking kill you. Yeah. Don't ask about me. I'm PP on How House Street. And I'm like, 
what? Die for the pussy. Trying to fuck. <laughs> um, the best part was. But you still got to fuck though. Yeah. Long time listeners, great. long time listeners great, of the podcast man. know this. So I'll be quick. But the year was 2002. The World Cup was in right. South Korea. Yeah. South Korea was doing very well that year. 100%. Uh, I think it was like the quarterfinal game or something. Yeah. I swear to God. <laughs> um, that when, hotel must have been popping. The whole street was popping. When I was popping my nut. Um, like there was a simultaneous goal must have been scored because the whole street went crazy as soon as right, I like, right, nutted right. for the first time in my life in a or near a vagina. Damn, so, so, you, <laughs> so you nutted as Korea scored against Spain. That's incredible. Yes, That's incredible, yeah, man. They made it to the semis. It was awesome. That's awesome. Um, okay, so Yoon's on 35th. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. Yoon's on 35th, bro. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's like my go-to when I'm in Manhattan, when yeah. I'm in Bergen County, there's a spot called Yetchip. Which means old house. I hope people are writing this um, down. Is, what, is right what, off like what Fort town Lee. is that? Is that you mean, it's in Fort Lee. Oh, it's in Fort yeah, Lee. It's in of Fort course, Lee. of course. Yeah. yeah. So the thing of the, putting the lead in Fort Lee. Lee. Do you fuck with the Korean spa there? In Fort Lee, the big one on the water. Uh, by Edgewater, you mean the one like on the Hudson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know which one you're talking about. Right. Um, actually, I think it's a bit too busy for me. Okay. I like to go to like spas where I could be comfortable. Right. Just with my nuts out, yeah. like naked. Just, just, just sure. feeling like, yo, like, yo, like, right. yeah. Is, is, you know, I, I recently just read uh, the old Jewish man guidebook oh, that, yeah. that, uh, that Noah put together. Uh -huh. Noah, right? That's yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, and I realized, I was like, yo, there's a lot of similarities to the life of an OJM and, uh, and a young Korean man like Why myself. Damn. Nuts out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nuts, Nuts out. Nuts and the sauna, in the wind. Just, just sweating things out. You know what I mean? You, you giving yourself the illusion that you're working out. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Well, uh, when you're a, when you're a when you go from YKM to OKM, when you're an old Korean man, you know, and and we're on death's door, not to get macabre, but you know, it comes for all of us. Right. What would you? What do you want your last meal on earth to be? Um, I think it has to be some sort of a soup and rice combination. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Stick yeah, with yeah. the classes. Yeah, what you know. it seems like that's, that's what you like. Yeah, that's it. You know, what I mean, I, I love getting my blood vessels drenched with sodium. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I need that. I need that uh, warmth. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like a hug. It's like a blanket. Yeah. You know, and if I'm going to, you know, go back to the essence, you know, the last thing that I want to do is, you know, feel warmth. Yeah. In yeah. the physical realm. And then like, if you're full of liquid, if you're full of warm liquid, you'll be faster decomposing, right? You'll go back to the roots yeah, quicker. I think so, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know if that's scientifically proven, but <laughs> I think so. I think the thesis has some legs. <laughs> Wait, do you as a Buddhist, do you believe in reincarnation? So I, I'm supposed to, but I'm more like a, you know, pick your own adventure a la carte Buddhist. Oh, okay. You like dim, I mean? dim some Buddhist. When it's convenient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, listen, man, like depends you on the stripes you run into. I don't believe day. in heaven. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't believe in reincarnation. I think when you die, you die. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You go, you know, you, your body turned to dust and then you right. become, you become fossil fuel yeah. for the animals. It's the Ivan Drago school of thought. Is that right? If he dies, he dies. Yeah. yeah. Straight I mean, up. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> did say that. Yeah. Whoa. Yo, Roger Dolph. Eber over here, man. Old, with old all these Dolph. references. That's, that's old Dolph. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Ivan yeah. Drago, one of the rare Russian Buddhists, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who wasn't even Russian? True. The actor. Oh, Dolph Lundgren. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I'm saying the character. Yeah, right? of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, while we're here on this small blue marble just spinning around the sun, if you could only eat in one neighborhood in New York City, right? What's the hood that you're going to choose? I mean, no question, Queens. But what? What? No, no, that's a borough. The, inter the intersection. Uh, it has to be an intersection. Okay. Because it gets a little bit confusing in that part. Okay. So there's one train station, right? Seventy Fourth Street, Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. That's that's the motherland. That's Ellis Island. That's the foundation. Is there you know crazy I mean? Mexican right off the? Right? There's, there's all types of Mexicans okay. over there. You all know types. what I mean? <laughs> all types of Mexicans. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? All all Mexicans of all colors and creeds. Right. You know what I mean? Sure. So. That area is like borderline Elmhurst, Jackson Heights, and Woodside. Okay. Ooh. So you get that's the that, Venn diagram. It pretty much. That's the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> and you could get lost in the sauce. Yeah, lost, man. You yeah, get lost like a, and you could never come back. Sounds like a good soup. <laughs> it yeah. is. It is an is an incredible intersection. And when when we first immigrated over here, and this is why I feel like I'm so blessed that that's where we first landed when we came to New York on 75th Street. Your Plymouth Rock. Pretty much, man. You know what I mean? So growing up in that neighborhood, 
like I had access to like Indonesian, Bangladeshi, Mexican, Salvadoran, Honduran, Thai, Korean, Chinese, like all in walking distance. Sick. You know what I'm saying? And I got, I got a little piece of everything. So, you know, if there's one neighborhood in New York, if anything, like in the entire United States, I would wow. say in terms of like Damn. just sheer diversity in a concentrated landmass, I would put that intersection against anywhere. What that's be, high praise, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, so this uh, 74th and Roosevelt. 74th and Roosevelt, the intersection of Woodside, yeah. Jackson Heights and Elmhurst. I, I know that for Righteous Seats, you've been able to do some traveling and highlight places in other cities around the country and around the world. Right. Is what city, because obviously New York's number one. Yeah. What city would be your number two, food wise? Food wise is a great question. Um, hmm. I think, I mean, fuck, man. You're just so in, many great places. You're in Portland, Oregon. You're in Seoul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, just in the United States, if there's a second. Yeah, sure, like, sure. Okay, just in the United States. Definitely we'll do domestic, uh, then international. Domestically, LA. Okay. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? Sorry, sorry that it kind of was a bummer, but I would put <laughs> Portland up there. Okay. Portland, Oregon. Yeah, Portland, Portland Oregon. Portland, Portland Oregon. Oregon. Okay. And no, no disrespect to Maine, yeah. but yeah, Portland, Oregon. <laughs> yeah, those Nike employees you are fucking I mean? love their Korean tacos. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Portland, Oregon. And uh, I would say, yo, Philadelphia, bro. Yeah. Philadelphia is highly underrated. Okay. I would actually say that Philly, in certain categories, have better quality food than New York City. Is that because it's cheaper and people can take nah, like, it's It's really because- yeah, actually, I think that's actually a good point. In terms of Vietnamese food, Philly yeah. trumps New York. Damn. All right. Out the park. You know what I mean? Way better pho in Philly. I would even argue some of the Italian classics, like, you know, red sauce classics mm -hmm. in Philly. Incredible. Incredible stuff over there, man. So Philly is highly underrated. Um, Sixth Borough. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, in terms of internationally, you know what I, what I think, bro, like, and this is part of the reason why I went to Italy, um, you know, about, about a month ago, my favorite meal in Paris earlier this year was this Korean blood sausage soup called Sundeku. Damn. In Paris. That was my favorite meal this year. Now the French might be like, yo man, that's some, the fuck you talking about? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, this yeah. is like where, oh, oh, oh. where, you know, modern culinary art started and how dare you say that about Paris. But yo, like, these third cultures are no longer just synonymous with cities like New York anymore. Like you go to Milan, you yeah. go to Paris, you go to London. Yeah, I mean, the British claim curry as like their national dish. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like they claimed a lot. They claimed <laughs> yeah. a lot. Yeah, yes. It comes with the so, territory. So I think that, you know, these, you know, it's no longer like, yo, you go to Paris, you know, just to eat like steak and fritz. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you could go to Paris and eat. Great Korean food. Dude, the best meal, we were just there. The best meal we had in Paris was from, uh, it was like a, a West African 100%, restaurant with like yeah. uh, Senegalese and Cameroonian food bro. and Cote d'Ivoire. was fucking gas. Exactly. You know, like there's a, there's, a, off. there's a small city off um, uh, 12 miles away from Florence called Prato. So yeah. Prato, Italy has the biggest Chinatown in Europe. Oh shit. And the crazy story about that neighborhood is that's the hub for fast fashion in Italy. But all the <laughs> neighboring cities, they create leather goods, outerwear, yeah. and so on and so forth. So what it is, is that you'll be surprised that a lot of made in Italy could very possibly be made by a Chinese immigrant who lives in Tuscany. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the modern world that we live in. Do you think that, do you think that uh, the Chinese invented pasta? I think that they definitely were nice with the noodles. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I don't know if they could, I mean, Chinese folks, they like to claim a lot of things, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I could go on and on about this shit, man, because you know, they didn't have a singular Chinese ident identity until like a right. couple so thousand regional, years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like 2,000 years yeah, ago. It's a and big then, ass country, bro. Yeah, you don't want to say too much. You don't want to ding your TikTok algo. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna Yo, get banned even more on TikTok. Yeah, well, look, uh, you know, you're you're earning power, you're earning clout, you're earning recognition. 
And uh, here in New York, we're currently going through a mayoral crisis of sorts. Yeah. <laughs> if you, J. Key Cho, uh. in a special referendum, were appointed, <laughs> yeah. maybe elected mayor of New York City, what would your first executive order be? First of all, I would hate that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay. I would hate that. Say, uh, you know no, I mean? thank you. Yeah. yeah. I'll be like, thanks, I'm, but I'm, no thanks. I'm, I'm good. good. I'm good. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, but if I do um, get to withhold, uh, not withhold, but, you know, be able to be in that position. I think the first thing that I would do is um, I would push for an agency, a city agency that oversees and supports street vendors. Mm. You know, it's very tenuous for them. Yeah. Yo, like, think about it, bro. Yes. Like, you know, I, I work very closely with this nonprofit called Street Vendor Project. You know, they do right. advocacy rights for street vendors. Yeah. And um, I recently... Just uh, on Tuesday, uh, they did their third gala and then they gave me an award for supporting them oh, nice. throughout the years. So <clears throat> what I've learned is that there's a finite number of permits mm -hmm. for these street vendors to vend, you know, food and whatnot. And some of them are grandfathered in. So they're, it's kind of like the medallion, right? Yeah, so literally they're the like exactly leasing like this shit out. Yeah, yeah. You know, so some of these vendors, they're paying tens to $20,000 a year where every two years to lease these vending licenses. You know what I mean? But there isn't a city agency that actually oversees or provides support. You for don't them. say. You know what I mean? And yeah, shocker. Yet, yo, like street vending has been a part of the fabric of New York City for more than a century, right? Like yeah. when the Italian and Jewish immigrants were here in the early 20, uh, 20th century, yeah. there were vendors then. Yeah. They probably had uh, 5,000 vendors then. Now they probably have 15,000 vendors. How the fuck does it make sense that these are all small business owners, yet they don't have an agency right. that supports and provides needs for them? They need representation. Yeah. And I think, I don't know why, I'm sure there's, you know, reasons that- I can know. think of some green reasons, bro. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why, but, you know, I really hope that there is some sort of a support for them. Do you think we're going to get that anytime, like in our lifetime, or do you think it's just fucking- Hopefully in our lifetime, but then again, you know, like with, with what's happening globally, the geopolitics of it all, like who knows, man, we might not even be alive tomorrow, so- yeah. We need we need big glizzy to step in. Like, yo, <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo. Yeah. I to push our fucking I mean, what about up. you guys, man? I mean, if you guys, you know, become Ugh. interim mayor. Uh I was talking about this on a podcast a few weeks ago, but um I think if you're in your twenties and you're moving to New York to start to jumpstart your career and you're coming from a middle class and up uh class of life, you have to take a test before you move to New York. Whoa. Like a driver's test. But it's like how to walk down the street with an umbrella, you know, how to fucking drive here, how to, how to jaywalk, stuff like that. Not so, so that would be your protocol. Yeah. And then I would probably implement the Chinese social capital system of like <laughs> all CCTV, you know, if you're spotted. <laughs> Yo, surveillance state? Yeah. If you're spotted, like blocking the train subway, like you're not allowed on the train for a week. Yeah. God. Like uh, the train door, I mean. Yeah. I'm simple. Just to get on my Mussolini shit, uh, trains every five minutes max. <laughs> That's it. That's all. Yo, if I walk down and I see eight minutes, yo, someone's going to jail. Bro. <laughs> someone, someone's, <laughs> someone's losing their head. Well, that's a very hateful uh, set of decrees, but let's turn to love for a second. Yeah, 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 our, yeah. Our, yours is full of love. Ours is yeah, full yeah. of hate. You recently got wifed up. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, brother. Food, uh, ultimately, yeah. is synonymous with love. Right. With uh, Food is love. It's It's intimate it's erotic we put it in our bodies yeah 100 percent. Right? yeah where did you and your wife eat on your first date oh uh, we got a um that's funny i don't even know if she considers it a date oh, shit. oh word but so the story goes uh i met this young lady through her best friend she was the maid of honor at the wedding um and it wasn't a date you know we just hung out with I oh. just hung out with her friend. A group hang. Yeah, it was a hang. <laughs> and then like um I did I was I did a party at this spot called Fat Buddha. <laughs> on, you know where it is. You know what I mean? Meatpack, so right? yeah. No, mm. no, nah, bro. It's in the East Village. It's right by Stottown, actually. Really? Yeah, on um 12th Street and Avenue Way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm slipping. Yeah, you kind of got your Asian car. You're thinking revoked. of pink elephant, thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm thinking of monkey bar. I'm thinking of monkey bar. <laughs> yeah, it could have been Fat Jesus, but they called it Fat <laughs> Buddha. Um, so yeah, so I, met, I, you know, I did a party over there. I think like 2011. Okay. She pulled up with this friend of hers, and you know, like young, single, janky, mm. early 20s. 
was outside. He's a weapon. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just try to holler, try to holler. And then, um, you know, we, you know, we exchanged contacts. And then I went to Korea and then I worked for an ad agency for like seven months. Oh, damn. So I, I wasn't even keeping in touch with her like that. And then I came back to New York and there was a theater near Lincoln Center that used to play all these art house films and shit, like in the basement. Okay. Um, they closed down, unfortunately. And then they were playing uh, Jiro Dreams of Sushi. Mm. So I really wanted to go see this flick. And, you know, I hit her up. I was like, yo, you trying to peep the details on this shit real quick? And Shorty <laughs> was that, late. Is that, is that what you said to her? Peep the details on Jiro, dude. <laughs> on some, on some detail. Yeah, like, I think along those lines. I think along those lines. Yeah. You're playing it cool. You're playing it cool. I yeah, get it, yeah, dude. Yeah. I was like, yo, let's peep the details on this. And, um, hey, yo, Shorty. Hey, yo, Ma, what's going hey, yo, on? Yo, you want, you want to peep the hey, yo, details Ma, on my man Yo, Ma, you try to Jiro? see this Omakase situation? This is, this, this is the Yo Ma era. Yeah, 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 she yeah, thought yeah. you guys were going to a fancy Omakase nah, dinner, nah, but you yeah, go to but, the movies. Yeah, popcorn. Pretty much. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, like, so she showed up late oh. she was she was late so i missed Women. that first screening and then we we ended up taking the other one. Oh, she was mad late she was mad late yo <laughs> shorty was dumb late she <laughs> took a nap and shit <laughs> what? You know I mean? so that's why she was late anyway <laughs> and you're like this is a keeper <laughs> yeah she's the one so up until that point i was like all right cool this is gonna be the film Are we gonna catch this shit and it's gonna be a wrap you right. know what i mean but after we saw the film we had a very good convo and we were just walking down um i think it was like Eighth Avenue or some mm -hmm. shit, and then um, and then I remember I just copping her a slice of pizza, mm. just like, like dollar slice, just like a dollar slice like or some two shit. Bros? <laughs> yeah, like it was something along those was it lines. A test, like see how she reacts to. Yo, so you know how in the Bronx Tale they talk yeah, about yeah, the, the three, the, yeah. the, the mm -hmm. law of three. Yeah, like my law of three, you know, is Shorty needs to. Shorty has to enjoy walking. Mm. Okay. You get her I mean? steps in. Yeah, she got to get her steps in. If Shorty's like, yo, like, we got to hop a Uber. Nah, I don't know, ma. Big like, steppers you know on me. Saying? Like, yeah. yo, 10,000 steps a day, no matter what, baby. Yeah. So Shorty has to walk a lot. I'm trying to walk a marathon. And um, they need to be open to different types of food. Okay. So, like, they have a, they need to have an amiable palate. Like, you know what I mean? Yo, sometimes we could go to, you know, 11 Madison Park. But, right. yo, you down to get this dollar slice? Right. Yo, they're mutually... Yeah. You know, like, yeah, like, so you gotta, you gotta respect both. And then the third thing is, yo, you gotta be into, you gotta be into some sort of uh, a culture, like some sort of subculture, some sort of art. Okay. And you know, like she fit all those criteria. But box one that she checked was, yo, she fucking dollar slices. Right, cool. hundred thousand. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was it. it. She, you know, not she's, the not, fancy. she's not too bougie. She's not too right? bougie, you know? Yeah. Well, when you are feeling bougie, maybe, maybe, but yeah, like yeah, now, yeah. now that, you know, it's, it's official. Uh, now that you hollered at Ma and Ma <laughs> hollered back, uh -huh. what's the spot you're taking wifey out to on date night these days? A date night? Yo, you know, and you've been in a relationship long, Yes, sir. Right? So how does, how does your date nights look like? I want, I want to get your thoughts. Shit, dude. We don't have any kids, so it can be whatever we want. Right. It depends how we're feeling that, you know, are, is there, is it like a, an alcohol forward date? Is it about like a place that, you know, we've been trying to secure a res for a long time? So for me, it's, Without having kids, bro, in this city, the world is your oyster, no pun intended. So for me, it's like, however we're feeling that day. Or if that person really wants to try something, it's like, yeah, whatever you want. And, what, what, and what's categorized as a date? Uh, spending time with that person. So like, let's say if you go to a, a Kennedy fried chicken Ooh. on Notion. Ooh, you know delicious. what I mean? And uh, We get that delivered. Okay. So is that a date? <laughs> no, or? no. Okay. You got to be out. You could have a date at home. Right. People do that. They, you know, but uh, nah. So do you have to dress up? Like, does she have to I have the I think we, li we like, like to dress up. Right. I think that only makes it more special. Right. But it doesn't need to be. Each other. Yeah. It doesn't need to be suit, dress, French yet. Right. It doesn't need to be that. Yeah. So, yeah, like in, early in our relationship, like one of our favorite spots to hit up was Big Wong. That's hell, oh, crazy. hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, hey, right, yeah right. Yo, Big Wong. And on the kitchen's Mott open 24 <laughs> 7. You know what I mean? Right? You know what I mean? With yeah. ducks just hanging on the yeah. window. In them guts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah, one of our favorite spots was Big Wong. Um, yeah, I know. I know it sounds that's crazy. A, that's a banger ass yeah, name. That's a, that's a banger name, yo. Word up. Um, <laughs> Word but yeah, like, um, I think now, I don't even know where we go anymore, bro. Like, it's just is like i think the last time that we had like a romantic outing was uh huh that's a very tough question 
I'm, I'm, I'm do you have any on the list up. of like, would you want to go like the grill or like fucking Laveau door or whatever? Like, do you, do you fuck with fancy bougie restaurants? Yourself? I do. <laughs> I do. I actually do. But you know, it's, I also feel like, is it necessary? No, not at all. You know what I mean? Not yeah, a, no, like, so, never, no. Um, I'm like blanking out right now. Maybe so it's just, maybe it's the it's the Chingon burrito. Yeah. You know, it it's is. Just like you it keep could it, be it, that. Go to your local yeah. spot. Let me let me ask you a question that might be, serve your memory better. Yo, what was on the menu at your wedding? Uh, we actually did it at Fish Cheeks. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, because it's like combination of a lot of things. You know what yeah. I mean? I love um, I love everything that that team does. You love fish. You love cheeks. I love cheeks. Yo. I love fish. <laughs> I love top people. You know yeah. what I mean? Happiest people on earth. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, we did it at fish cheeks and, uh, yeah, man, the show was incredible. I, yeah. Um, it was on, it was on bond street, mm-hmm. right? You know, like my wife's office is across the street. Oh, easy. And then um, her. <laughs> she should have a better work-life balance, baby. Yeah, you know what I mean? Pretty much. <laughs> Yo, I got to pop and answer some emails yeah, real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, when you got a meeting at five and a wedding at seven. Pretty <laughs> yeah. much. Yeah, 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 where the yeah. cashmere. Literally. Yeah. yeah. The store is down the block. You know what I mean? Right. So it was like, yeah. it was it was chill. Whole squad oh, ensconced. Yeah. I think like one of the first actually, um, like I would say like, it wasn't romantic ne- necessarily, but it was like a, Bill that I remember in my early 20s that I was like, yo, this oh, shit is a little bit damn. out of my usual budget. Sure. Was when I took her to a, a I think it was like El Buco. Okay. You oh, know, it's like yeah, an yeah. Italian joint. And, you know, yo, again, uh, like in your early 20s, you're like, damn, like this fucking like Cacho y Pepe is like $35. Yeah. Dollars, like, damn, this shit crazy. Full circle moment. So we sent the fit pick to our group chat for our socials guys to have and everything. And uh, one of our former Grom says, yo, so I'm at the Il Buco pig roast. Unsure if he was there, there or just walking. Oh, by. that was actually my wedding day. Oh, oh. shit. <laughs> yeah. Cause uh, yeah, it was like El Buco was having like their 30th anniversary yeah. or something. It was popping. Oh, so and that's then, beautiful. Like, yeah. It was on September 22nd. Full and circle. then like, I was moving back and forth, like sure, picking sure. shit up from the web, bringing it to the office where she was changing and all mm-hmm. that. And then, you know, a bunch of people hanging out outside were like, oh yeah. shit, you the fucking righteous eats guy. And, and I was like, like yeah, yeah, I'm getting married. And dog. I'm getting married, yeah. dog. You yeah. know what I mean? I ain't got time for a picture. Well, <laughs> From your days of uh, Cacho y Pepe costing 35 bucks, kind of freaking you out to, you know, now just casually throwing a pig roast uh, type <laughs> wedding. JK, how much money do you make? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> me as an individual, I don't make much. Okay. You know what I mean? But as a, uh, you know, like if you're asking me, like what's the, t- what's the top line for Righteous Eats right. or, you know, what's our the holding gross? company? <laughs> yeah. You know, I think we're doing okay. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think we're doing okay. Good. I mean, we're able to sustain an office. We work, but, right. you know, we're able to sustain Forward an office. Forward momentum, my yeah, guy. We're right? able to, I'm able to pay rent. Yeah. You own you know, 25 of these hats. <laughs> I own a lot of hats. Yeah. I own wear a, a lot of hats too. I wear a lot of hats. I, you know, I, I get to eat what I want. Yeah. Right. You know, I get to take Ubers when I need to. Right. right. So I think once you get your 10,000 steps, naturally. 100,000, you know, yeah. so. I think in New York City, again, like they say, what New York has the highest concentration of millionaires in in the U.S. Probably, yeah, um, probably like Fifty Seventh Street. So, so considering that, like this is a city that has a lot of people with a lot of wealth. I think I'm able to sustain a living and a lifestyle that I'm pretty happy with right mm. now with no kids. Right. So yeah, right. that's where I'm at. One on running shoe after another. We're just fucking moving pretty forward. much just that's going it. through it. Yeah, you know, hundred percent. I mean? Hundred thousand. Besides, besides investing back into righteous seats, and besides food, what and you know from your meager salary, what do you like to spend your money on? <laughs> um, let me ask y'all. Like, what, what do you guys spend your money on? Clothes, clothes, clothes my dog. Like, my what's wife. your what's your average spend on clothes? Like, if you oh, have no. like a pie chart, how much of your income goes to fits? <laughs> Too much. Much. Um, I would be 50%. No, no come on. Dog. Like 30. No. Yeah. 25. I would say like a third to, would be like crazy. 20 to 30. Year. It depends on the month too. Yeah. Sometimes I go weeks without buying anything. Mm-hmm. Right. Sometimes I hit a manic moment and I'm just opening packages Monday through Friday. So are you like, we get going, a lot of, we get a lot. We're blessed enough to also get a lot of free. That's, shit. that's what I mean. So yeah, Honestly, probably I get a lot of too money, much money. Too spent, much. It's on Ubers and it's on like eating at restaurants. hundred percent. Yeah. I, I think it's similar for me as well. Like I also like to buy people meals. Sure. Oh, nice. You You're generous. I mean? uh, well, 
I think, you know, certain people express their love language in different ways. Sure. Right? Like, so there's yeah. like, you know, words of encouragement, right. you know, spending affirmation. time together, affirmation. Physical, physical touch. touch. Physical touch. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm just I, trying to touch the cashmere. I, mm-hmm. I like to, I like to um, treat people to meals. Hey man, oh, you should you know take us out to dinner sometime. I would love to. Yo, we're available. Dead ass. Let's I'm, go to Coke Duck. Change my mind. I would oh, love yo, to. Change honestly, my fucking yeah. mind. And then you can pick our brain. Yeah. I would love to. Yeah. Well, Jay, keep Maybe before. not Coco Duck, but. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Uh, KFC. The, uh, no, Kenny, Kenny Fried Chicken. Kenny Fried Chicken. Yeah, Kenny Fried chicken. Peppers. Yeah, yeah. Peppers. Yeah. 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 OG sure. Um, Before we get you out of here and you take us out for a meal, we want to ask you one last question yeah. after an hour 40 or so. God damn. Hanging with the goddamn motherfucking boys. Mm. I know this ain't no TikTok video. It is not. Do you have any constructive criticism you'd like to give us? Constructive criticism. Huh. Yeah, just based on your experience there. Just based on my experience. Fe- feeling us out, you know, catching yeah. a vibe. Um, I don't know. Hit us with some darts, dog. I think I think y'all should definitely communicate prior on what y'all gonna be wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Normally we do. You Normally we do. Damn, dude. Yeah, Normally yeah. we do. Gra- Honestly, I didn't, I didn't know crazy. he was going to a rave later. That's you know. You know what I mean? I, I feel like the silhouette. <laughs> You know, if I'm just looking at it from the shadow, it would be very similar. We both are wearing loafers, jeans, yeah. and soccer kits. I know. Yeah. And, 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 and hats. And hats, hats. Uh, have a very similar silhouette. You know yeah. what I mean? So maybe- it Tends to happen. Y'all need to communicate a little more. Normally, TFFC. Normally we do, because we have a lot of the same clothes because usually we get, you know, shit sent to us and they're just like, hey, here's one for you, here's one for you. And so if I'm wearing something that I, we call them common Johns, I'll be like, yo, are you wearing the whatever, like the, the XYZ? And he's like, Nah, go for it. Or he's like, actually, I'm where I'm. I'm already at the house more than the X. I'm like, all right, fuck, I got to go change. Yeah, right. So normally we do. <sighs> this, this is, is more of a thematic stu- embarrassment, yeah. if anything, I yeah. would say. Nah, but yo, I, to be honest, man, like <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna say, like, yo, I'm, I'm genuinely, um, I didn't do a whole lot of research coming in here mm. on, um, on, on the empire that y'all building. <laughs> nah, I'm dead Thank ass. You. Like this is, this is incredible stuff. I mean, yo, you. how many people get to say that? Yo, I left my, you know quasi lovable media job and built my own ain't no quasi media company <laughs> and started well, the podcast actually a lot of, a lot of podcasts uh, but, but and and now you guys have enough success to build a living and a lifestyle yeah. in new york city true i mean yo you guys are killing it man thank hashtag you. blessed baby thank you and man. on thank top you. of that y'all get 50 percent of your revenue from platform dog 33 percent. okay but still that shit is incredible man Thank like you. i really Thank give you, it up dude, for that y'all. means a lot to hear you know what i mean it. that's righteous of you bro yeah listen Speaking which jakey where can the kids follow yeah. you what would you like to plug the Go floor off. is yours yeah um righteous eats on tiktok youtube and instagram and jakey cho that's the government j-a-e-k-i-c-h-o on instagram tiktok that's about it do you care do you have a favorite social media platform I actually prefer Instagram mm. just because I think with TikTok- For the baddies on the explore page. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my explore page is mostly- Soup? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of soup, actually. Soup yeah. and rice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's soup and rice and uh, <laughs> clips of new jeans. That's like my favorite. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite K-pop group of all time. Shout out to new jeans. <laughs> Um, yeah, You're so, plugging, he's plugging new jeans, yeah. dude. I follow, love that. Follow new jeans. Yeah. Yeah. Follow new jeans. Yo, yo, what's up with the Korean cheerleaders at baseball games on TikTok? You seen that? I've, I've, I saw a glimpse of it, but I, I see, I see them in real life, dog. You know what I mean? I, I go oh, like to Korea. Yeah, 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 I go to Korea and I yeah. check them out at the baseball games. I thought we should meant, go together. Thought you were talking about like your fans. Yeah, nah, Korean, nah, nah, nah. Korean bro. cheerleaders. Nah. Yeah. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> Yeah. I love my fans, but you yeah. know, let's get some cheerleaders, cheerleaders on righteous, yeah. righteous seats. All right, Jay Key, thank you for coming. Appreciate on your to time, bro. The only podcast that matters. Chef, take us out.